And how are we doing, everybody? Getting a little bit of a late start here right here. I already noticed I messed up on the uptime again here, so i got to fix that here real quick. I uh, apologize for a little bit of a fumble there. No harm, no foul, though. We can definitely get this lined up here. Hope everybody's doing well on the Saturday. Got some really cool stuff, I guess, to show off here in a moment. Let's get this timer set right. So let's do this. Five. By the time I get to that, that should be about right. So how well do we do? Perfect. Awesome. All right, so get the uptime going on there. I, I do tend to, it's kind of maybe just a little bit of a, <laughs> how would you call it like, a necessary evil, I guess, as far as uh, to have the uptime on there, kind of gives you a really good time stamp um, as far as like when different things happen. I guess during the, st the streams here on Spline Design Studio Saturday, I guess as far as if you got some specific point that you want to be able to get to, understanding that there is the uh, the time uh, lapse or whatever you want to call it, as far as whatever player you happen to be uh, watching the the vod on, as far as be it either on Twitch or the YouTube. Um, kind of gives you a little bit more insight as far as like, okay, I want it at that particular uptime. Whether or not that actually is true or not, I'm not 100% true, but I guess it's a little bit of neither here nor there. I guess it's a, I just find it a necessary thing, I guess, to have on there. So hopefully it is helpful, I guess, for you guys as far as uh, trying to find the uh, parts of the stream that you necessarily do want to find information on. So as I mentioned, Got some really cool stuff I guess to be able to show on here. Uh, primary focus here is going to be uh, a new track release for the NASCAR Racing 2003 Season Simula Racing Simulation. Um, chase version of the Dover International, the 50th anniversary version of the Dover track that Torch just put out there in the pr previous couple weeks. So let's go ahead and bring this right on over. Got it already loaded up here. And this one here being the chase version. So this would be considered the uh, fall race. Um, I believe it uh, falls right around the time frame of October, uh, which is in the playoff uh, section of the 2019 season. So we got uh, new types of um, 
sponsorship, I guess, for that particular race would be Dryden. Dryden, however that's pronounced. You got the 2019 playoff uh, badging and such like that. Um, got some new items in here as far as uh, the new pit garage. That's over here in turns one and two. So that's a new feature, I guess, as far as uh, for that particular race. So that's brand new. We got some new signages on the grandstands. So on top of all the um, sponsorship, I guess, was for the chase, the chase uh, part of the, uh, the visit to the track there in October of 19 there. We've got some of these new features like that just to kind of depict it for that particular event. So yeah, we got some new signages were over on the grandstand. So this is kind of gives it that depiction, I guess, of being at the fall race, I guess, for that. So some of the things that, as I always do, I guess, with these uh, new track releases here is we, uh, we go through the process of critiquing the track to see where we could potentially make uh, corrections and or improvements, I guess, to what's in here. That's what's... Uh, the name of the game here when it comes to now I have talked with Torch I guess as far as um, in the grand scheme of things I guess to point out I guess some things that could be addressed uh, one of those being the uh, for lack of a better way to put it probably the clarity of these the foam in comparison to the geometric walls between the safer and that to create this uh, this darkness that is the cavity to where the foam resides there just to kind of make it look like it lives there you know, and as far as it belongs a little bit better. Uh, just, again, just kind of uh, using all the experiences and the um, methods that we've come to make it so that it looks better. You know, just make it that much better. Not that it doesn't look at all that great just the way it stands, but it can definitely always uh, be improved on. So, uh, we've got a cone up here on the wall here to kind of better highlight the restart zone. Uh, for the drivers to be able to pick that out so not being able to see the badging on the wall and or the ground they also put the cone up on there as well as up on the fence so that's a new feature for the chase edition here uh, so some corrections that have already been made uh, even with the uh, the spring race which is basically the June race I guess they consider that to be the June race so the previous re uh, release of the Dover 50th um, anniversary track um, did have some issues that will definitely get addressed in this release and this is some of the things we want to go over here so some of these things have already been corrected but I'm gonna go through some of these processes to get that um, applied the, uh, the way it needs to be so as far as like the the opening between the fence lines uh, for the starter stand for example I'm gonna go over that a little bit just to kind of show all that is how you know what the, what the whole process for that is and um, also to apply some different um, shading and such to make this cavity where the safer foam in between the, the geometric uh, safer and the concrete, you know, to kind of make it look, you know, make it pop a little bit better as far as uh, make it rest in there and make it look like it belongs there a little bit, a little bit more than it already is. So yeah, these are some of the things we'll go over prior to the official re release on the website and per the talks with. Uh, torch there he's mentioned he's gonna make this at least initially there solely uh, available only on Spline Design Studios website uh, for starters there and then from there uh, d depending on popularity of it and so on uh, will it get released I guess in other and other websites as far as like being on Facebook or his own website and what have you so Torch can feel free I guess to elaborate I guess on what we talked about there but uh, that has been some of the talks that we've had, at least anyway. Off stream, I guess as far as just to kind of clarify, I guess as far as what's going to go on with these uh, these track releases that he's been producing here with his uh, signature on it. So putting the stamp of approval on it, you know, as far as going taking it, him allowing us the opportunity, I guess, to critique it and uh, see where the improvements can be made and be able to apply those right on stream here uh, prior to the release of that. That's uh, something I can uh, very be... Uh, Honored to be able to do so, I guess, as far as uh, instead of just uh, putting it out there on his own. So, more than happy to be able to do that. So, I think what we'll start off with is I'll go into this a little bit. This has already been done, like I mentioned, um, as far as to 
create this uh, this opening here in the fencing uh, for the starter stand. So this is all geometric, um, if that wasn't made clear enough already. All this fencing here, uh, what the texturing is, geometric. So you have to set this up or whatever so we can apply this opening in here. So without creating an actual model for that, which there is a piece on here that is modeled, you know, to kind of, again, just as we've been showing plenty of times, I guess as far as the way of uh, the way of things, just marrying the two um, options there as far as the geometric as well as the 3D modeling of the track together to make it look like they belong together. So that's uh, that's definitely possible, I guess, with even this... Uh, I almost feel this is a tad bit loud, so I'll go ahead and turn that volumes down on the background music there just a tad. I feel like I'm having to yell over it. <laughs> so I figure if I, I, most cases, if I have to yell over it, it's probably a good sign that it's pretty loud for yell right there. So, so yeah, we do have a 3D model piece, as I was saying, underneath um, the actual grand st uh, starter stand here. And then these are the geometric walls as far as for the fencing there. So... And just to kind of show here really quick, this is all, all this work has been fixed, you know, since uh, the fall race, or not the fall race, but the spring race in June. Uh, some of these things that have been addressed. So let's go into the fencing line here and just kind of show what we've got going on here. So go into the properties. So again, we're, we're considering the direction of the track, which happens to be uh, counterclockwise in this case. In this direction, you can see the arrow. So on this the first initial segment here, we got two texture segs. So we got one with the texture and one without. And the one without is obviously what's creating that opening here right by our um, starter stand. So just to kind of show how we got this going on here, a little bit closer, I'm going to bring this camera view into, into focus, and then we'll bring up the properties and see if we can bring these together. So again, considering uh, the direction of the track, so in this first texture segment for this fence here, we have no texture, which creates this void, right? So if we didn't have this 3D model piece, this would all be open in this point here. So if we go to text seg 2, this starts where this texture would be. So that's the actual visual texture here. So we have that all set as far as the texture size and the skewing for it. So just to kind of show that I'm on this part here as far as past the um, starter stand, I'll just change the skewing on here just to kind of show this I'm making sure I'm on the left side so we can see how that's shifting that's going to, sh to show me as far as like a, where I'm at and that okay so I'll put that back to where it needs to go whoops I gotta put that on a negative now the fact that I have this on a minus 1.40 you can see how that shifts in there I'm gonna back this up just a, just a second here again so that's more positive at a 1 so the fact that I've got it at a negative Again, considering that direction of our track, the fact that it's going this way, it's going back towards the starter stand. Now, if I were to make this more positive, it would shift more in the direction of the track itself. So that's uh, just a fair mention there. All right, so, whoops, that's my properties here. So again, if I put this more positive, let's kind of show this here, come on, work with me. Now we're, we're basically at zero, so if I go a positive one, you can see how that shifts forward in the direction of the track. So we definitely don't want it to go that way. We want it to come back towards, we want this post here to line up with the, the outside edge here of our starter stand. So this is where we've come to that conclusion to make it at a minus 1.40. So now we got that post right up next to the side of, uh, and we want to put that texture the same on both sides here. So on the left side, track facing as well as the back side. So I'll put this on the right side on that facet. And we got that set the same as the other side. So that uh, coincides with that texture being applied in the same uh, texture set on both sides of the fence. And we have that opening here, and now it doesn't. That texture, you know, now so the collision for it, as far as from a geometric standpoint, is still going through here. We just don't see it because we don't have the texture applied based on those two texture segments that we have there. Now, if we were to apply, let's go back to texture seg one. We don't have the texture, just. We'll just apply a texture to it just to kind of show how we've made this, created this void. So let's put, just for the heck of it, we'll put the fence on here. Like so. We can see, if we were to leave that texture on there, we would have that texture going through our starter stand. We don't want that. So we, all we have to do is just put it on none. 
so it creates that void. So, again, just to kind of clarify the fact that the the geometric fencing, you know, for that spline for the for the fencing is still there. We're just saying don't show it by applying in that fashion. So, and that works on both sides. You do this much the same fashion on both sides of this um, starter stand. So, this is on the latter part of that going in this direction on this side of the starter stand. If we want to do the same thing on the other side, let's go back. And then we should be on this segment now. So let's go to the right walls. And the right walls would be facing away from the track. So that would be the back side here in this case. So just to kind of show where we're at here, we want to be on texture seg 2 as it doesn't have anything. So again, just to kind of show the fact that on texture seg 2 starts at basically this post. So our texture 1 goes from this point back. And texture seg 2 starts from this post onward. So we're, we've left it void. So again, just to kind of clear, make, make it clarify, we're on the right side here. We'll apply a texture to this just to kind of show where we're at. See, it's applying a texture to that. We don't want that there because we only want that, that post to show. So we want to leave it on none as far as the texture. So we don't want the texture to actually show on that geometric spline for the fencing. So that's basically giving you a rough idea um, as far as how to line this up there. Now to also with the texture skewing here so we can get this post to actually show up you know as far as the texture skewing let's go back to texture one that has our actual texture so the same thing here what we did to line this post up here same idea with the other side here that we already showed you can see how that shifts there i put it at a three so we want it to go forward here now in this case we're having it go backwards, so we're having it come back a little bit. Now we can do this in increments, small increments, just to, until we get it to where we need it to be. So in this case we'll do just for starters here, uh, 0 0.320. See how that shifts? Okay, that's not enough, so we'll do 3.50, say for example. I think I had too many decimals in there actually, so you can see how that's shifting. So. More or less what you need to understand as far as like your configuration of your texture. Uh, because of where we started off with this post, let's put it back to zero just to kind of give you an idea of what, we're, what I'm speaking of here. So we can see the post is right here. We could definitely go forward if we wanted to. But then you also want to consider where does this texture start. So let's pull this back to just a little bit so we can see where, where it needs to be here where we want it to get, eventually get to. Where does it start over here, for example? So again, if we just kind of shift this really uh, radically, we can see where that texture starts is roughly in this area, right? So, so let's start it back to zero. Okay, so now we're at zero. So in order to get, we can do it one of two ways. We can either pull it back to line the next post that's in this texture. You can see how the spacing is on this, right? So we can get a rough idea of how much we need to bring it back or move this forward uh, to be able to line this post up with the, the edge of that texture stack against the so we can go either way with it so let's try it let's go positive this this uh just for the sake of argument here so let's go one two let's try 2.50 so that's pretty close it may be a little too much and we can see how this is creating you know either more or less of a gap between these here we don't want these two close together but if we got some spread in here it's probably not that that terrible either but this is all in consideration as far as the direction of the track and also the way the texture is designed. Uh, so the texture would need to be, I'm gonna open that up here really quick just to kind of give some more clarity here. So for our track, I can get in the right track folder. Give me just a second, navigate to the track. So we got, uh, what do we see here? All my other track builds in here. Let's go to here. Let's go to our chase version here, our track mat. And then we wanna go to that fence texture. It's all in alphabetics, so da, 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 da. there we go. So we're going to open our texture. So the fact that this is at a zero in this case here, what that means is having it either at a two or a zero, it's going to it's going to shift um, on this axis as far as the vertical axis, the horizontal, and not the vertical up and down. It would be this way. So as we shift that, when we're shifting that skew on that, um, let's go back to just again just to give some clarity. So as we shift this skew that we've got here, having the map set to this way, it's allowing it to shift on the horizontal axis. So if we had to send it, if we had it at a three, 
it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, skew properly so we have to make sure we've got this mapping for this texture onto the geometric uh, wall segment uh, set properly so that's that's a that's a critical piece there I guess as far as to so without having that just to just make sure I make that abundantly clear now this is probably one of the very few textures that we that the, there's still a TI applied uh, to that and torch and I have uh, discussed as far as like some of the other textures that can still uh, be adjusted I guess to remove uh, the possible TI now this one here is probably not too bad it's only the one texture and even though it is used in multiplicity around the track it's only this one texture that creates this uh, with a TI so that's this is not necessarily a terrible thing in that regard this is a common practice to be able to use that type of texture for uh, that type of application to a geometric uh, wall spline okay so now that that's out, that little bit of explanation is out of the way we can now be able to manipulate this texture across here and again just taking in consideration the direction of our track the fact that it's counterclockwise this is how we can shift it so if we go positive we get that result and again if we zoom in here just a little bit more now that we know where where it starts from and where we want it to end let's bump this up a little bit further uh, let's see, let's get into our properties. Alright. You definitely want to make sure you don't put too many uh, decimal points in this thing here, otherwise it won't work. So that's a little too much. Let's do a 2.40. So you can go that way as far as to go positive. Or, you can have it at the negative. So either way. And it's all in taking into consideration how much spacing we got in here based on our, the way our texture is designed. As far as what direction we can go. So in this case, we can go either backwards as far as to scoot it backwards or forwards that's that's a matter of preference i suppose so we're gonna do let's bring it back so we go minus three and see that shifting back so we still don't have the post revealed here let's go back a little bit more okay a little bit more okay so not enough so we do we ended up with 3.70 so there it is revealed and if we pull it back to see how much spacing we have on the back side here you can see that's pretty that's pretty uh that's pretty decent now we got a little bit more spacing you know than we do from here to here but that's not necessarily terrible we necessarily we don't want to have these posts i guess too close together so as far as that spacing between here that necessarily is not terrible now looking at it from the other direction let's just uh do some comparisons here so that was going backwards with it Let's try the other way as far as to go shoot, scoot it forward. So if we do 2.40, we get almost the same result as far as the, the amount of spacing, either going front ones or backwards. This is a little bit different value going forward because we didn't have as far to go going forward as we did backwards. That's the only difference there. So you have that distance there. We can see that shift in it even from this, this distance here. We're going to stick with the negative um, movement of it. So we'll do 0.370. And then we want to apply that same value on both sides. So we got this on the back side, which is the the side facing away from the track surface. And then the left side would be the track side facing one. So we want to set that up the same way so we have the same positioning of the texture on both sides of the fence. Okay, so we want to go to our properties again. Okay, and then go to left sides. And we got that set at the same value as we do with the right sides. So that's basically just the quick rundown, I guess, as far as how you want to create a void or an opening in your fence. And then the only other difference that has been applied to here is to create this 3D modeled piece to put um, to fill in that opening here, because you wouldn't be able to do that uh, beyond. I mean, you probably could, but you would have to apply a different type of texture uh, to your geometric wall to only have it on the the top side of that so you could definitely going back to the texture here just to kind of show this is another approach you could definitely take it would take a little bit of um, trial and error I guess with it so creating the 3d the 3d piece there underneath there is definitely not a bad way to go uh, but yeah let's open up that that texture again just to kind of show what else you could do uh, let's gotta find it again I closed it and I should probably shouldn't have open this open up here right here so let's go to our handy dandy windmill 2 okay and then we'll yep we're in the right folder 
Alright. Fence, 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 fence. Should be alphabetic. Here it is. Pretty simple texture. So, what you could do, also, you can see we already got um, a void down here. This basically represents the, uh, the concrete wall, for example. If we did want to create an opening for that segment um, in our tech seg here, underneath that would be represented underneath here we could definitely create a, a separate texture if you wanted to this is a, another approach and create another void underneath this in the form of a ti and only have this top half basically show and then you could apply that texture to the geometric wall spline to only show up on that texture seg that's, that's just another approach. So you would just have to create another void in the texture itself. That would create a new texture, obviously. So that's that's definitely an approach to take. Now, when in, taking into consideration what I've already mentioned as far as like having a, a TI with it, probably not the best approach because you want to reduce the number of uh, textures with a TI as much as you can. So by doing it with in, in the form of a 3D model. Now, with that being said, with that being said, I'm going to open up the texture for that 3D model piece that's underneath our flag stand and show exactly what I was talking about as far as like now when this was a initially built it was you know kind of removed against someone I guess as far as understanding uh, the use of a TI as opposed to not now so so the fact that we're kind of creating a redundancy of that same texture applied to that 3d model piece for that fencing underneath the start, uh, starter stand let me open up that texture for that model piece so that's gonna be this one right here. So you can see immediately right off the bat here for this 3D model piece, it has a TI. So we're kind of defeating the purpose of having the TI in both pieces there. So to kind of keep this uh, more optimized, what we can definitely do for this 3D model piece is to take out the TI and just make the, uh, the magenta background, for example. And that can be easily uh, accomplished by simply if you've got the original texture that you created this uh, parent image with, you can do that. The, the fact that it's got this blue, you can actually make that magenta, and then you'll so you'll you shouldn't get any bleed at all. This is pretty uh, crisp and clear uh, type of texture to this, so that wouldn't be too hard to do. And that now this texture, keeping in mind, um, is at a 1.33 megabytes because with the TI, we can definitely reduce that uh, twofold uh, by removing that necessity for the TI in it. And granted, it's only the one piece, right? But when you've got already this one basically as a redundancy, it, it, it kind of creates a somewhat of a, a certain level of de-optimization in that, in that fashion. So, uh, barring the fact that, you know, I showed what you could do, I guess as far as what does this texture create a new texture for that 3D model piece, or lack of a 3D model piece and just applied it to geometric wall spline directly and not even create that 3d model piece we torch has taken the approach as far as to create a 3d model piece which in either way it's going to still require i guess to create a new texture but it's just how do you optimize that so that you're not adding more i guess to what needs to be rendered and still get that uh, maintain that quality so what we're going to do here is we already got the save we haven't made any changes to this as of yet i'm just showing off as far as what's already been done to kind of uh, you know clean up some of what's going on here so what I'll do is I'll close this for a second I don't need to save that I already got that saved the only reason why this dialogue is coming up there is because I've actually selected items in here I haven't done anything to it I still have that PTF change with all those changes that I've just showed so I do not need to save that so I'm just gonna close that for now so that's common kind of there so what we're gonna do with this uh, texture for that 3d model piece underneath our stand is create a non uh, TI uh, version of this so we can reduce and optimize the texture for that model and torch has done plenty of this already so I'm not trying to take away anything from what torch has done uh, with this but this is something that he is I talk about as far as like just how much more optimization has been applied on top of the way the models themselves has been designed to make lesser you know little more low poly models as opposed to higher poly models that's already created an optimization itself so you want to uh, in creating things you want to not only do that to the model itself but also the texture if you if you have room for it at least anyway in this case we do so we want to be definitely be able to tap into that uh, so what I'm gonna do is create a bitmap for this and what this is gonna do 
um, as we've come to understand with the WinMIP2 utility. Because it has a TI, it's going to create two images. It's going to create our parent image and our TI image that has the uh, transparency applied to it. So it'll create a underscore TI, and we'll see that here in a second. So if I do a file save as, and I'm going to keep that right into our um, track edit build folder here. Leave the name as it is. Spit that out. Now, if you have the raw texture, obviously, you'd want to use that. But what that'll do, by doing so, is it'll create the two images. So there's our parent image and our TI. This is what we want to eliminate. We don't need this anymore. But we can use this. We can definitely use this if we need to, I guess, as far as to create our, 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 our uh, transparent background without the TI. So we're going to keep that for now. We're going to open this up in our paint program. In this case, I'm going to use Photoshop. Or uh, Paint Shop Pro, my bad. Paint Shop Pro. All right. You could definitely use Photoshop as well. That's definitely an option. So one of two ways. Now, I've shown this plenty of times before as far as how to get. So all the only thing we want to be able to depict out of this image um, as far as to remove um, any necessity for TI is these black, you know, the black mesh. So because this is nice and crisp and clear, we could probably easily get away with flood filling this. That, that could be one approach. So just to kind of show, we want to get magenta in here, for example. And this is just one approach. I'm not saying this is you know, the empirical uh, way to do this at all, but this is one method as far as to just completely flood fill this. I'm going to change the tolerance. And you can see what type of result we get from that. So we would have to go through each one of these, whoops, each one of these squares to be able to fill that in there. That's a little tedious. So another approach that I've taken is, okay, I'm going to select both these colors and both my swaths here as far as what I want to remove. And this is just, uh, uh, this is the approach with at least PaintShop Pro anyway. So that's that's another fair mention. So the fact that I um, want both swaths, selected I guess as far as my eyedropper for that color that I'm trying to remove right so now what I do is I, I get the what is my parent image size 512 by 512 I'm gonna create a new image same size okay so let's do 512 by 512 like so now what I'm gonna do is take this copy it and with those still selected there, I'm going to make sure I get out of my eyedropper so I don't change that. I want to keep both my color selects. Now on this new image that I created here, I'm going to do an edit paste as transparent selection and don't move that. So now it's removed that entire blue. So now I can make it whatever color I want as far as... So I can create another layer. And this works really well as far as when you have such a, a nice crisp... Um, uh, parent image as far as that what you're trying to keep in this case the black wire mesh it, It's not real pixelated and whatever to make it this difficult to be able to do this process so The other thing I want to take into consideration when I do this though, you can see how much it shifted you know as far as the um, the, the alignment of it we can definitely fix that uh, so from here for example, I can take what I've copied over Okay, let's go ahead and copy this We'll back over to our image that we're donating from. Okay, let's paste this into here. And then we'll get this lined up. Oh, hold on a second here. Why did it not paste? Paste as new layer. Boom. There we go. So we got that back into here as a new layer. And it's probably going to put it in the same position here. Let's see here. Something didn't work out right there. Let me try this again. I did something wrong. Let me start over. I'm gonna first of all I'm gonna change this over to just for clarity here. I'm gonna change this to promote this to a layer. There we go. Now we want to copy. I want to make sure I was in the right layer here. I was not. Okay, that's probably why. So I copied over basically an empty, empty layer. That's what I did wrong. No file. So we'll just do this. Edit paste as new layer. Now, you can see that misalignment here. Now what I can do from here is actually line it up where it needs to be so that when I bring it over to my new image, it'll be nice and lined up. So the only other thing I need to do, and this again, this is all uh, with the mechanics, I guess, that uh, PaintShop Pro has. So I'm going to create some alignment blocks here so it stays in that position when I bring it over to my new image. And I can always remove these alignment blocks. 
But I'm going to go to opposing corners like this. There we go. And I'm going to copy this back over to our new image. And now what that's going to do is it's going to put it in the orientation that I need it to be. So this other image that I have, I don't need it anymore. Let's get rid of that. Now I can remove our alignment blocks. Oops. I got that on feather. I do. Let's turn that off. Okay. Oh, we got to make sure we get in the right layer here. Oh, I see what I did. Let's get rid of that completely. There we go. So this is the image I want to take the alignments blocks. Oh, that's what we brought over from here. We aligned it up where we needed it to be. There we go. So now if we put these side by side, we can see we've got it in the proper alignment now. So we want this alignment from our uh, original image. Now again, from here, we can definitely uh, put what, our background color whatever we want. Okay, so just to give some clarity, this is our new... Whoops, I'm in the wrong texture. There we go. Helps when I get in the right texture. I'm going to put this below it. So from here, I'm going to put the magenta below that. So now we can make it magenta. And then we can make that whatever color we want at this point. So we got our parent image there separated from our blue on there. So that's at least one way, another way you can do that. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go with this one here. And we're going to basically redo this texture. Now I'm going to keep this open in here so I can refer back to it if I need to. But we can see how much... Uh, we, we saw how that model piece looked for that fencing underneath that starter stand. We will definitely... if As long as we don't see any uh, magenta bleed as far as uh, applying it, applying the texture in this fashion here, then we're good to go. We don't need to do anything further. So let's go ahead and flatten this down. Like so. And then file save as. And we're going to put this into our track edit directory. So let's go like this. Tracks. Third party. Go to our track build, which is the Dover Chase Torch Edition. And we're going to save this as a bitmap. And it's going to, it's basically going to bark at me and tell me, um, I'm going to step on that original one. I still got it open here. All right, so we need to go to bitmap. All right, so it did not bark. Hold on a second. It should have barked at me. Did I put it in the right folder? Maybe I didn't. Did I save it? I don't know. I got to double check that. So that. Oh, I saved it as image two. My bad. That's okay. I boo booed. No problem. Okay, so let's try that again. File, save as. TE. So we want to basically save over this one. Now, again, I got that still open here, so I can still refer to that. So even if I do overwrite this one, I still have the original image here uh, in my uh, Paint Shop Pro. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to overwrite that. So now we've got our new image. And just disregard this one here. That's what That was a boo-boo on my part. So now we've got our new texture here. Now, what we want to do before we make our new MIT file based on this new texture is we want to get rid of this TI. So I'm going to move this out of the folder there so it doesn't read this. Because you, even though you do um, made this new texture here, it's still going to want, if I open it up in WinMIT 2, it's going to want to read this TI. We don't want it to do that. So what I'm going to do is cut this out and put this on our desktop. Okay. Just put that right here for safekeeping, like so. And what I'll do is just close this uh, WinMIP2 out just to kind of remove any cache, memory cache, I guess as far as what textures we did have open here. And then we're going to reopen this new texture, now that we don't have the TI in there. Okay. Let's do open with WinMIP2. And it should already be in that directory for our track. Yes, it is. Nope, that's not the one. That's the wrong one. That's our image. All right, this is the one we want here. This is our new stand fence texture for that piece. So there we go. So it's not opening that TI with it. That's why I had to remove it. Now, if I would have left that TI in there, it would have showed it would have populated in this uh, image here, and we don't want that. That's what we're trying to eliminate. So that's why you have to pull that out. That's why I closed uh, Wimit 2 to remove any memory cache, just to make sure it wouldn't read that, that TI. Okay, so from here, what we want to do is pick that swath 
uh, to show up as a transparent we want this magenta to be our our color our transparent color so we would just want to do our left shift and pick on that till we get that swath where we got our mouse pointed at to show up in an invisible color so that's going to be our transparent color for this image so from here we can go MIP leave all those parameters the same you don't need to adjust it um, just leave it just as it is you could probably adjust the priority in that but that's not really necessary for this piece so all we got to do from here is just do a file save as and save right over that original mint file um, in fact before I do that this again just for clarity I want to do some comparisons here so I want to save this original file which was at 1.33 megabytes and we're going to compare the differences uh, between the two files once we save the new one so let's copy this out of here and we're going to paste this to our desktop so just again just for comparison sakes 1.33 that's with the TI our new texture should end up being less than that okay so we're going to do file save as new MIP we're going to at this point we're just going to go ahead and overwrite what we have in our chamber I already copied that out on our desktop yes I want to overwrite okay close that now we can compare file sizes to see how much we've optimized that that uh, texture let's do a refresh here all right and then our new texture size without the ti ends up being 171 kilobytes big difference between 1.33 megabytes <laughs> so a huge reduction there so we do have compression in there so the previous uh design uh con configuration of that texture with the ti was uncompressed that's why it was so much bigger too that's a huge difference I guess as far as um, optimization of just a single texture like that um, just in one false one false swoop just like that 171 kilobytes in comparison to 1.33 megabytes so that's a big difference um, as far as using a TI and not so if you, definitely so now we're gonna take a look at how that with that new texture uh, constructed we're gonna see how that model piece underneath the flag stand actually if you don't get any bleed as far as the magenta we're golden we don't need to do anything further so let's go ahead and open this back up and this is going to load it up now with our new texture that we just created so what we're looking for is the lack of any magenta bleed so as you can see no magenta bleed so you can see uh, basically what I'm the uh, point to take from this is you don't need to have TI you can definitely create your texture without TI and not get any bleed and that's exactly what we're seeing here so as I've shown it before this the texture with the TI you get the same result regardless now in some cases just like with the fencing that I showed that comparison to you do necessarily probably want to maintain the TI as opposed to not but in this case there's really no reason to have the TI so if you have the ability so we can do the same thing with the um, the fencing that's on our geometric fencing we could do the exact same thing as far as to potentially remove that I don't think it'll necess be necessary to do so let's look at the size of that texture for that fence just again just for clarity so that texture for the geometric fencing ends up being uh, 85 85.9 kiloboys that is not that terrible so having a TI into that as far as the overall size of that that is not terrible so again I'm just going to open up that texture just to maintain the clarity I know I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here but there's a lot to be said so the fact that this is at 11 that means it has uh, compression so if we had this at a 7 like we had the previous texture that we uh, created for that shadow or the stand fence that was at a 7 that's without compression that's why it was so much bigger so that's another option that you could do um, as far as just to balance it out as far as to optimize uh, the file size of the texture especially if you're using it in a multiplicity you could definitely apply uh, compression to it you just have to basically trial and error to see if that's if that's going to be feasible uh, for the look of it at least anyway in this case it does so you could definitely go that route if you wanted to in my opinion I think it works better I guess to go this um, the route that we did with the uh, this way so when you compare this original you know how much clearer I guess this is here in comparison for example you can see this is a lot more pixelated but when you put when you apply the transparency it actually cleans it up 
So just think some things to think about as far as like whether or not to use t uh, transparent image or not. That's the only thing I was trying to uh, point should be to uh, point should take from that at least anyway. So I uh, will put that to rest for now. Hopefully that does give some clarity. So definite improvement um, from a 1.33 megabytes down to 171 kilobytes. Definite huge reduction on that. So we don't need this anymore. We're going to go ahead and get out of uh, PaintShop Pro. Okay. Um, might double up on the black fence for a bit more clarity. What do you mean on the black fence? Double up on it. How do you mean on double up on Oh, copying over and over again. So you mean, um, as far as like, if you wanted to use, yeah. Now that we have this in a layer, and it, it definitely, if you have this in a layer, um, as far as to copy it over and over again, you could probably apply this. I think it's what you're trying to say, as far as to use this to make your new fence uh, texture. You could probably do that. Yeah, that would probably be an option. Yeah. So by creating this one here, you could create your new uh, fence texture. So. Yeah, let's go back to that real quick. We could spit that out and actually make those comparisons. So let's go into our fence texture. Boom. So let's open this up. Fence. So say, for example, you wanted to make this texture that we've got here and apply that to here. You could copy that into here in much the same configuration there. And that would probably give you um, a fencing texture that doesn't have... I think that's what you meant there. <laughs> you can defi definitely uh, correct me if I was wrong in my understanding and comprehension of that. That would be an option. Um, honestly, I don't really think you really need to adjust the texture for this fence here in the geometric wall. That's that's perfectly fine. I'm mostly just uh, more concerned, I guess, with the, uh, the texture for the modeled piece, which is... Uh, Oops, let's go back to our camera. That would be this piece right underneath here. So, and you got this lined up pretty good too. Turned out pretty good as far as to line up pretty well with uh, those. So either on either side. Oh, we don't have the back side. I mean, that's not a bad thing, but that's something that could be adjusted on the 3D model side as far as to create the back facing of this so it shows on that side as well. It's not a huge detriment, but that's something that could be addressed if you wanted to. But the fact that it shows on this side at least, too. Not too bad. Oh, so many caps. What I meant was if you copy the fence outline uh, in your template twice, it may darken the fence and make it more clear. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think you meant the caps there, but... <laughs> So yeah, if you were to take, I think it's clear enough as it is, but I think what, okay, I think I see what you mean. So if you wanted to take this, um, I already moved the alignment blocks, but yeah, if you copied it again to make another layer to make it more clear, yeah. I don't think that's really necessary, but yeah, you could copy this. Um, in my case, I would have to maintain the alignment blocks and create another layer uh, to it. But you could even change from this point here, you could definitely uh, change the coloring um, of that, the black line, say, to a more silver. You could play around with that. I won't go into all that detail, but that's something else you could do as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you, I'm sure you did. <laughs> it's like, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's definitely room, I guess, to be able to manipulate it that uh all you know many many different ways i guess from that point anyway i think i'll leave that to where it is uh what else i'd like to get into is um how to make um these cavities here i guess where the foam is in between the geometric uh safer and the concrete you know kind of nestle it in there i guess a little bit better make it look like it's it's it more belongs there yeah 
so here we go yeah so for, as far as duplicating the layer what I would have to do for my cases here the way I've got this design I would have to maintain those alignment blocks if I were to duplicate this layer from this point it would be out of whack which I just have to line it up again that's the only other downside to it so if I duplicate this for example uh, duplicate actually it's not too bad nope it actually it made a liar of me but yeah see I can duplicate that and make it and again you can play around with all of that in layers as far as to make it darker and all that good stuff I won't beat that to death just as far as that you can play around with that layer just as far as to all right so as far as applying additional um, shading I guess that's where I was going with that to make this uh, foam feel like it's nestled more in between this cavity between the concrete and the safer I've also talked to Torch I guess about um, the contrast that exists here with uh, the top of the safer in comparison to say the concrete there's a little bit too much uh, contrast there and you know it's just a matter of just color hue I guess on that and I could easily be adjust as well well, yeah, if you if you have the original PSD, yeah, that definitely helps there. But even if you did want to create a new PSD, just like I did, I could save that and play around with it to use it for uh, other other projects, I guess, either around this track or another track. So, okay. What I want to do, so where are we at here? I want to go closer to the uh, uh, restart zone here. Let's go all the way back here. This is where I was talking with Torch, I guess, as far as... This really stands out to me as far as that contrast in between the color of the foam, which is all 3D modeled. And these are geometric, um, as far as the safer and the concrete. So, just to get that to make it look like it fits, you know, that it's all nestled in there and it, it all belongs together, uh, you can definitely play around with shading on there to make that happen. So... That's why I want to play, play around with here next. Do, 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 do. Not that it looks terrible the way it is. I just think it could be uh, improved upon just a little bit further is all. So, all right, so let's um, go into this wall. And I'm going to go into this segment here. So just to kind of show where we're at here, we're just after this uh, restart zone for the general tire. And that's the same place that I am here. So I want to play around with some shadowing with this uh, concrete pit wall here. All right, so we're basically just after this uh, red area here for the general tire restart zone. So we should see some shading applied to this. So go to the properties. I wanna get to the right walls because we're on that side. So this would be the left side over here, right side over here, this would be the top, obviously. So we wanna be on the proper facet. Now we wanna go to light map, because so we wanna apply shading to this. And we already got some uh, shaders in here. So wall shadow, we'll apply that. You can see that amount of shading on there, All right? So that gives us a little bit more. Now we can even go so much further as to adjust the shading for these. Now I don't think that's something else I guess I wanna look into. Are we using the same texture for all this foam all the way around the track? That's something else I wanted to look into as well. So let's take a look. So if we go into these foam pieces, I don't know if I did select the foam. What did I select there? Pit wall order. Okay, so that's all 3D model there too. Nice. All right, so let's see if we can find, and I've shown this before plenty of times before too, in order to select the different pieces that are in your um, track, track side object view, um, it doesn't always help to keep clicking around um, in the sandbox view here because you could definitely shift something out of place and not uh, intentionally. So it definitely works to your benefit to go to your items list here in the pull down and find it that way until you get to what you need. Yeah, so let's... Um, we should have all these different foams in here and different... Uh, so he's got these labels pretty well here as far as like backstretch. Um, see FA1. 
So what we're going to do is go through these until we find the piece that we want to actually have, which is over in, on the front stretch here. And Torch would probably know more, but I'm just going to kind of feel this out a little bit. It definitely helps when you label these, I guess, in such a way that makes sense. So that's actually turn one, if I would understand. Turn one A, for example. Okay, so we got a pit one. Okay. Pit two. It's got to be one of these, I'm assuming. Okay, so there's pit eight. Yeah, these are labeled pretty nicely, actually. Seven. So we're going this way. Gotcha. Six. So you can see how he's got these nicely labeled. So this is pit six for the starter foam. He's got it all zeroed out. Cool. Um, what texture is applied to that? So the way to get that, and I've shown this before too, we want to look for this 3DO. Okay, so we want to find that in our track build here. So we got to look for that 3DO. And that was pit six, was it? So I want to double check. Yes. Okay, so then that was right here. So there's our 3DO. So we can open this up with Notepad. Let's bring that over here. And then we want to do a search for MIP as far as to, to see what textures are applied to that model. So we'll go like so. And then we can see we got Star block that's all using so it's probably using the same texture for all the foam would be my guess so for all the foam um it's probably using that same texture right and i think he's already confirmed uh, torch already did uh confirm that so we don't have the adjustability at least in this case to be able to change um, different levels of shading for different pieces of foam so whatever we do adjust on the styro block foam it's going to affect all the foam so we just want to take that into consideration as far as that. Now, going back to here, as far as the way the foam is here, we can apply some shading to this as well. We'll get to that in a second. But just opening up the, the options here that we have for shading on here. I am almost thinking, between looking at between the two of these, we could probably adjust the shading on the foam just so that it accommodates uh, both of what we're trying to do here. So... Let's do this. Let's go ahead and open up our starter foam. We'll get out of the fencing. You don't need that. We're done with that. Except for the foam under the bridges. Right. So you've had those different uh, separate pieces there. Right. And it's got the separate shading I'll applied to that. We have shown that before too. So let's get... Um, we got to go to the root of our track folder here. Not in the track map. These are models. So that'll be in the root of the track folder. So that's going to be styro block. Should be all alphabetic. Da, 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 da. Right here. And we got one for the support too. So we do have uh, some foam blocks that don't have any concrete into it. So it has the, the foot on it. So we've got a texture for that one as well. So that's pretty cool. So here's our foam. Now, if we wanted to play around with this, I'm going to use, uh, just for, again, just for comparison purposes, um, one of the other track builds that I have done in my own, you know, in my own builds, I'm going to compare this with um, the foam that I have for uh, another track, just to kind of make comparison. Now, I do know one of the things that Torch has applied here is this, uh, this strip of um, shadowing. He took advantage of that to get able to add um, a certain level of shading, which, which is very... Um, I don't want to put that very creative in that regard. The fact that this area, uh, as far as the texture mapping, uh, the UV mapping for the the model 3D foam, was not using this this spot here, and Torch used that to his advantage to be able to apply the shading to the other the other uh, 3D model pieces there. So that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna open up a different texture here that's in another one of my track builds, like I said. So I'm gonna navigate over to that. And it happens to, this is going all the way back to my uh, Darlington 2015 build. Just to give some, uh, uh, let's got to find it. This never did get released publicly. I guess that's probably another fair mention. So, the foam that I have on this one should still be in the name. Yep, there it is. So this kind of shows you the differences of what we got with this one here. So we didn't use this area. Torch found use uh, for that. 
So this area here that's all white, this wasn't being used, so that's that is kind of blocked that out white. So you can see the differences as far as the color hue and all that, all that stuff. So I can easily probably apply this texture. I could probably even just add what torch is applied here to this and just see what that looks like. I will definitely probably pull this out as a copy so I can always go back. Okay. So what I'm gonna do. Yeah, let's do this. We're going to make this a bitmap. I, I could go back to the PSD layered uh, template here, but I want to use this one specifically uh, to edit that. So I'm going to do this and go file save as. I'm going to put this on the desktop to make it a little bit more accessible. So let's do this. Save that there. Cool. And then this one here, I'll keep this in our, um, our keep. I'll keep it in our Dover track build. Okay. Just to kind of keep them separate because they're both the same name got the same naming conventions there so i don't want to step on that so file save this one and on this one i'm going to put in our dover track build as far as for the chase edition third party is ti so yeah just keeping all this stuff together in our track edit folder here there we go so now we got the two textures and i'm going to open that I'm gonna go ahead and close this out here. We don't need this anymore. Now, if you did want to save this as a uh, layer template, you know, so to use that later on, you can go ahead and do that. You have that ability, I guess, to do that if you didn't already. We're gonna just not worry about that. We've already adjusted this texture. We've already clarified that it doesn't have any texture bleeds. So that's good. Um, what about the throwback? Okay, so what I need to do is go to, I'm going to open up the one I put on the desktop here first. That's from the Darlington build. So there we have that. And then let's take a look at the one in our Dover Chase build. I should say Torch's Dover Chase build. We've only been collaborating, I guess, with Torch, I guess, on that. So let's go tracks, third party. I know I'm bouncing all around quite a bit there, but in an effort, I guess, to keep, you know, not step on um, all the files that exist in the track build here and not get it confused, um, that's the only reason why I'm doing it that way. Okay, so where did my starter block go here? There it is. So we can definitely see it from our paint program as far as the difference in the color hue even. The shadowing is more or less the same, but what I want to do is use this texture and again, I'll keep this texture open here, but I want to borrow probably this here, and I can, you know, line it up against how this looks here, right? So, just gonna play around here a little bit, and see what, what kind of look we can get here, at least anyway. Uh, confusion is normal, in my day. <laughs> I gotcha. Sometimes me, too, my, uh, myself as well, that happens. All right, so we're gonna piece this up we're gonna do copy paste this in here as a new layer okay now I might need to adjust this here a little bit that'll be easy enough to do all right so I think he's got let me see what we got here all right so that goes all the way to the edge just want to make sure All right, so we do not have any. Okay, just want to verify that these are both the same size. We're both at 256 by 256. 256 by 256. So we should be all right that way. As long as they're both the same orientation. Now, what I'll probably do is just adjust this layer that I brought over from here to more comply, I guess, with uh, the look that we got in this one, right? So I can easily do that with it, this being in its own texture layer, its own layer. Um, let's play around with this. So if we go, say, screen. Nope, that's too much. Let's try overlay. Boom. All right. I'm just going to play around with these layers here just a little bit. See what we get. Burn. Nope. Um, let's try multiply. I may actually try a second here, go back to screen. Let's change the opacity of it. OK, 
Okay, not giving me the result I want so far. I got a better idea. Let's do this. Let's put this back to normal. Boom. And then what I'll do is I'll create another layer based on that. So I'm going to duplicate that. Like so. So I was going to put that over there. And I'm going to make this one a screen. Actually, I'm going to put this back to 100% opacity. There we go. And then adjust this to... Sorry about that. I had to mute the mic there by accident. There, so it's going up and down there. I had to have that hot key in there. So this gives us a little bit more uh, what we're trying to go for here. So we can kind of adjust that layer now on its on its own. Um, he does have these lined up. Okay, so let's adjust that a little bit. Okay, I might be making. Uh, okay, I got a better idea. Let me delete this for a second. So it's going to keep selecting that one. So let's go back to this one. I need to line up these uh, seams here. Like so. A little bit more this way. There we go. Cool. So I'm just lining up all these shading lines like so. That's better. Now what we can do is apply duplicate that one like that and then we'll change this to screen like so and then from here we can adjust the lighter darkness of that it's actually not too bad like that I can dig that now, I don't remember what this actually is used for uh, torture can probably give some clarification on that I do remember making that point as far as how you made use I guess of that area but I don't 100% remember what you did to use that for. We can always make that adjustment, I guess, to it. Because we got all these layers in here now. That's the nice thing, I guess, about being able to create layers like this. Okay, let's do this. Uh, foam on the back stretching. Okay, gotcha. So... Again, this is kind of... Now I need to refresh my memory. So you use that area for... I just got to refresh my memory here. So if we go back... Let's step back here just a little bit. So going back... Let me speed this up here a little bit. So on the back stretch, you've got these deals here that you use... Yeah, so what you probably used that for was the back side here. If I remember right. So you made use of the back side of that foam for that texture uh, in that area, which is pretty creative, yes. And also shading. Oh, on the back straight? Okay, gotcha. So maybe I was on the rim. Okay. So you get, you probably got a different texture for these. I haven't looked into that, that, that closely, so I'm not 100% sure. So on the back straight here, so all this shading over here. Okay. Now I remember now. So what you did, that's what I remember now. So you created that shading on the top of these pieces of foam uh, by applying that. Yeah. So it has a separate level of shading on here in the form of uh, just that texture mat. And that was by using, whoops, this area. So what I don't want to do then, I guess with all that being said, I don't want to remove um, that shading. Now. So I probably want to get it to the same level here for that good point all right so let's back this up a little bit Let, let's apply a, let's duplicate this one more time like so and I'm gonna apply this one as a multiply so we probably want to go more this route so again just trying to create that same level of shading on it we could probably even go a little bit darker let's apply another duplicate 
This is the beauty of layers. Just like onions. Alright, so duplicate. So yeah, what we're going to try to do is we want it to comply, I guess, with the, the, the coloring of the shading on this one, but also compare it to the contrast that we have on here. I almost want to get it to look more like this. So probably the other thing I could do is just borrow a chunk of this section here and put it apply it up here. That could be an even better uh, option there instead of going this route. So let me turn these layers off. Okay, let's get this back to square one. There we go. And then what I'll do, let's convert this to a layer, promote that to a layer so we can actually do something with it. And then I'm gonna chunk some of this out here. This may or may not work the way I want it to, but we're gonna play with it anyway, just to see what we can get. All right, so I copy. And we're gonna paste this right above that as a new layer. So from here, we can be able to piece these in here like so. Now these may or may not line up. Not too bad. I'll have to see how that looks, but yeah. Alright, so then we'll also do it paste as new selection. At this point, we already got the new layer. I have to fill that in a little bit. That's no problem. There we go. Yeah, so we're just lining up all these seams here. Pretty good. But we're complying it to the same level of shading that we have on this one here as well. It's the only thing we're trying to accomplish with that. Alright, so let's do a clone tool. Yeah, I'll bring that up just a tad. Actually, I'll do it this way. Let me grab my little eyedropper here. Go this way. Let's fill this in like so. Ooh, that's too big. Let's do let's do one pixel. There we go. Nope, we're gonna do line. Hands a little too uneasy there, so let's go one. Got that in my color swath. There we go. Oops, got a little dot right there. There. So now we got our new texture that we can apply to that. Now we'll be able to make these comparisons once we save it. Uh, I'm going to reopen the track to see how it looks. And we can go from there. So I'm keeping this one open. This is our original texture. That yeah, we can always definitely uh, refer back to. All right. So what we want to make clear, what do we have? Uh, let's go back to our Dover build here third party over chase try no no no, no. start a foam over here and open this up so we want to make we want to take note of what the, the parameters are so we got an 8 10 3 and 1 so that's that's pretty standard so we didn't have to make any um, uh, special changes to that so we want to put it the same exact uh, configuration once we save this new texture so from here we're gonna go ahead and layers merge all flatten save this as and then save that into our Dover track build okay so we go to tracks third party Dover chase DE and save right over this one now keeping in mind we still have the original texture right here so even though we've overwrote that into our track edit folder here we can always refer back if we need to okay now just for further clarity, I'm going to, if I haven't already, I think I did, but I want to make sure. I did not. So what I'll do is I'm going to pull out, just copy out this uh, starter block. This is the original one, right? I'm going to do a copy. I can also re just rename this 
as a backup. I'll make a copy and just do a backup. I can do it that way too. I'm just going to pull it out and put it right here on the desktop just for safekeeping. So that's something I'll be able to refer back to. So not only the texture that I have here, I can create a new MIP that way. I can still refer back to the original MIP. Okay, so as I make this new texture that we just created, like this, do MIP. 8103 with a priority of 1. That's all we want. So that's our new texture. So we do file save as. And we're going to put that in our Dover track build right in the root. And save over that one we just copied out. So there we go. So now we should be able to reopen this track. And what I didn't do up to this point now, and I'm going to go ahead and do that just for the sake of the stream here. Let's go back over to where we're working on over here by the restart zone. I'm going to go ahead and save this because I did apply that um, that one level shading. I can always reapply that, but uh, just for the sake of stream here, I want to see the difference of how that shading with that new texture that we just created for this foam will actually look. All right. So let's go ahead and save this as. Let's get out of here and go back to geometry view. File. Save as. And make this a new PTF. Because we're, we're, we're testing this out. We don't want to step on a PTF file that we've already established. We don't want to break that, so we want to be able to refer back to that. So because we're going to kind of test this out and see how it looks, I want to make an entirely new PTF. So in this case, we want to, uh, I'll just do apply uh, new shading, new pit wall shading. Let's just try that. Pit wall shading. And you can make it, you know, however long it's not as far as the notation and as far as like what you're doing to that. Whoops. Kind of helps if I spell right though too. There we go. Let's do that. So that'll be a brand, uh, totally separate PTF. Okay. And then just to confirm that it did do that. Go up here. So that's the one for the fence. And here's the one for the shading on that. So I can always refer back to a uh, previous PTF there if I need to. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Because that's the only way we can get that new texture applied to the 3DO uh, for that new texture of the safer foam. Um, if it was a geometric uh, texture, as far as when the, based on the track mat, we could just do the reload MIPS. In this case, it doesn't work that way for objects, so we have to uh, close the track out and reopen it for that uh, texture to reapply, I guess, to our object. So this is the one we want to open. And that should apply the new texture for the safer foam. All right, so now we go back to that same area over here by the restart zone and see how that looks. Now we can see the difference. All right, so without having anything to compare it to as far as like what it looked like to me, I can already tell just by my memory there. It doesn't have as much green hue to it, and we can definitely see that from here to here. You can see how this is much more white in comparison. So with that shading on there, that actually looks, you know, more uh, nested in there, for lack of a better way to put it. Doesn't look bad. So let's go check it out over here. So on these walls. Now, we didn't add any shading, I guess, to this, but so we can definitely apply that to our safer wall here as well. See how that looks, too. That definitely. Well, let's go take a look at how that looks over by the, uh, underneath the bridge here. So we did have to uh, redo that piece there, as far as the, let's go see how that looks anyway. See if we damage that at all. So, no. So we still got that customized shading over here underneath the, uh, the bridges as far as for those pieces of foam definitely doesn't look too bad yeah see so we so if we apply the shading properly you know in that cavity where that foam is at again it could be just me and this is just, uh, things that we're playing around with to see what looks good and what doesn't that actually doesn't look half bad just like this. I'm digging it. 
pretty cool. All right, so let's go back over here to the restart zone. All right, so we've gone over as far as how to apply uh, the different texture um, segments, you know, to create voids and such in, um, you know, openings of walls and things like that, particularly fencing in that case. And now we're just playing around with shading, you know, to make these uh, pieces of safer foam, I guess, look a little more nested, for like a better way to put it. So let's, uh, so we already got some shading in here. Okay. The other thing, as I already pointed out too, with, we can definitely uh, adjust that too as far as the safer top. Okay, so a little bit, in my, and this is a, probably in my own opinion, it's got a little bit too much contrast between this safer top and this side. Um, so you can definitely see that, and that's probably a little too much. And I can definitely notice that all the way around with the safer. You can really see it here. Now, if we were to apply shading on this side it may not be as uh, as abundant there so it will definitely uh, apply the uh, shading on this side as far as the back side of the safer just to see how that looks and then go from there so let's go up to this point in that segment so we already got shading on that part alright let's um, go back here now we need to select the wall segment by that restart zone over here. Let's get pointed to that. So we're right about there. That should be the safer wall. And to confirm that is the safer wall, we go into our properties. And we can confirm that is the safer wall. So that's the top. We don't want to mess with that. We want to mess with the right side. Okay. Okay, so with the right side of that facet selected. We can now adjust and you know, apply a shading on it. We want to go into light map here and actually go down our list there. We can create a different one. We're just going with what's already in the track as opposed to, you know, trying things out. And if it does need to be, so I can already tell you still got that contrast in between there and that's a little bit, again, in my opinion, a little bit too much disparity, I guess, as far as the type of hue that's on the top wall in comparison to the, the safer wall. So there might be, need to be some uh, further adjustment to that, possibly. And just to kind of uh, make some comparisons here, just like we've been here so far, let's open up the safer top. That's going to be in the track map folder. That's all geometric. All right, so here's our soft wall top for that. You can see that coloring applied to that. Let's open up, um, I'm trying to remember which one did I use earlier that was showing torch off stream. I believe that was for our Texas 15 build. Um, it is named different, but that's that can easily be changed. That's no harm, no foul there. So let's do this one here. On our track mat here. Whoops. Da, 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 da. Medium. And that should be. Yeah, so I got a top inside. Yeah, so it's top inside is what I named that one. So it is a different name to it. So you can see that right off the bat there as far as the difference in color. You know, as far as the hewing is very subtle, but that little subtle difference there, I think, is what's making a difference. Now, the only diff other difference that I notice here is he's got this at a map of three and not a map of two. Um, we're going to plug this one in there. We're going to make a copy of this one, put that to the desktop so we can always refer back to it. We'll plug this in here. We'll name it properly as far as to co coincide with what we've got in our track build, I guess, for Dover. But then from there, we'll, uh, we'll take a look and see what that looks like with that shading applied. Now, be it the fact that I already mentioned the fact that this is a geometric adjustment here, we can definitely use the remit or the reload MIPS function. So I'll be able to use that as opposed to just closing the track and having to reopen it. You can still do it that way, but when you're dealing with geometric textures, um, like with walls, um, it sometimes helps us to be able to use reload MIPS. That's how that works. I think my playlist is done in here. Let's get that back going here again. 
There we go. Alright. So, first things first, what we want to do is copy out in our track map folder for our Dover build that softball top texture and put that to the desktop just to put it to the side. Okay, so we're going to copy this out. Okay. Um, let's see. Weld seams are on opposite ends. Is it? I'll take a look at that a little bit closer just to make sure. So we'll do paste. So we're going to take that texture. So what we're potentially trying to do here is actually replace this one here so we can actually reload this in our door track. Let me look at this one here. So you're saying they're on opposite ends? Oh, I see what you mean. So you got that weld seam that's right here. Yeah, I, th I see what you're saying. So we can we can definitely make that adjustment here if we need to. Let's do that. Let's go bitmap. And we'll save that one here to our Dover track map. Okay. And then we'll take this one. Move that to a bitmap and file save this one as to the desktop. We don't want to step on this one. Now granted it's a different name, but I don't want to I want to keep these separate. So we're eventually going to overwrite this one so we can get it on to so I'm this is my approach, I guess, to keeping things separate, seg segregated. And then getting it consolidated and combined, I guess, into it eventually at the at the final product. So let's go keep that one here and put that on the desktop. There we go. So now we've got that one right here. So we got these two textures that we've taken from uh, uh, two different locations. Now I'll apply it on the desktop and everything we want to... Uh, make our new textures for in our track our dover track build our track edit build all right so let's open up these two textures uh so let's go to the track mat here and get the softball top here okay so now we got that open so what torch was referring to is the fact that it's got the weld here for our dover build so we want to put that in that same spot as far as our new texture Okay, so now we want to go to the desktop and get that get that texture. Um, that should be this one right here. Yeah, so definitely again you can see that that difference in the coloration of it. Same that it seems to exist with the foam. So even with that one there, so just to kind of remove that and make it a little bit more white. By doing this to all these textures here, we should definitely uh, create some parity I guess as far as to this on the other end so this is our new texture hmm so what I'm trying to figure out at this point is how am I gonna get that uh, that line to be in the same spot I don't even know if there is a line in here is there there is you can barely see it but it's right here on the very end of the texture right there this is the texture that we're trying to borrow you can see where that seam is right there so we want to be able to get that lined up All right so I think the way I'll do this is like this well, let's do it this way so we're gonna line it up this way so I'm gonna need to take this out on this end you can barely see it we can see how much offset it is here we don't want it on this end we want it on this end for our texture now the other thing I was taking into consideration as far as I made that mention here the fact that that softball top was set to a three um, that may or may not screw up I guess the orientation of the seam so I'll, I'll, again I'll try that out just to see how that turns out but usually most of your um, your wall textures you know as far as your geometric uh, textures that are in your track mat need to be set to a two a map of two in that case it happened to be a three that was something else that I had discussed with uh, torch and it might have been just an oversight in this part, but whether or not that'll actually change the dynamic of how that texture is applied to that, we'll take a look and look, take a look at that a little bit closer as we build this, this texture anyway. Alright, so first things first, we need to take that seam that's on this texture that we're trying to use, make our new texture for. We need to get that out of there. So let's do this. We'll use the clone tool. 
Okay, and we'll just do this. And clear this out. Oh, missed the bottom part. It's a very thin line, but it's there. Should be all gone. So now what we want to do with this lined up this way, I want to get this seam applied to a new texture. Okay. And I think the way I'm going to accomplish this is I want to. I got my gray texture in here already. Let's do this. And I might have to play around with this a little bit. That's okay. I'm going to create a layer. I'm going to promote this one to a layer and then also create a new layer. That's empty. Cool. And then I'm going to take a line and I'm going to add some anti alias to it. And I think I want to go up Scotia here like this. Oh, that's too far over. Now, the fact that I got this in a layer, I can definitely move it. If it gets up out of whack there. That might almost be a little too dark. And I can always change the opacity of it too. So again, it's in, it's in its own layer. So that's what's kind of nice about layers. That's the beauty of layers. Okay. There we go. So we got that real. So get, now I can change the opacity of this. So, not the bad, not the bad. I'm, I'm digging it. So yeah, we can see that difference in the coloring. At least I know that anyway. So let's go ahead and try that out. We'll do a layers merge all flat. File, save as. Now I've already got that texture already saved and copied over to the desktop. Fair mention. So I'm gonna, in order to make our new texture, I'm gonna overwrite the one that's in our track, our Dover track build and track mat, right? So we want to navigate to that. Definitely want to make a copy. Always better to make a copy. That way you can always have something to fall back on. So do track mat. I want to overwrite this. And that's also automatically going to change our name of the texture that we're creating in our paint shop. Yes. Okay, now we already made note of the mapping of that was originally a, two, a three. And we're going to try making it a two and see if that does necessarily step on uh, the orientation. It might so, and in which case, I would take, personally, to, to fix that issue, I guess as far as the, the mismapping, I guess, of that texture, if it does shift it off, you know, as far as to change the skewing, I guess, of all those uh, safer tops, I would probably adjust those individually. Personally, that's what I would do, <laughs> if, that, if that tends to be the case anyway. We'll see if it happens. It may not even do that. It might be just fine. Uh, so we'll go to third party. Go to our Dover track build. Do, 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 do. Here into our track mat. We want to open up that new bitmap, which is right here. Okay, that's our new texture. And we want to go MIP. And we're going to keep this, we're going to put this at a two as opposed to a three. Oops, my bad. That's what it should be in the first place. The fact that it was originally at a three. We're gonna test this out and see. Now I need to save this in our Dover track builds. So make sure we're getting into the right, the proper directory. Chase track map, and we're gonna overwrite. I already saved the original texture under the desktop, so we're good there. Yes, I'm gonna overwrite that. Now what I can do, as I was explaining earlier. I can reload MIPS. I can use that function because that's that texture was applied to a geometric uh, piece of the track and not a model. So we don't have to close it out. So we can easily use the reload MIPS. That's going to take a second. Now that reloaded that texture. Now I didn't see so much of a change there. I was expecting to see a little bit more, uh, more of a shift in it. And I didn't. So, 
Is there a light map applied to this? I'm kind of curious now. Let's go to the top wall. There is not. So there is no light map applied to this. I expected to see a, a little bit more of a shift in the, the coloring of that. Let's see here. So it doesn't look like the seams actually shifted, so that's good. Alright, let's go back to base texture. Oh, that's got a softwall top too, my bad. So we'll have to adjust that too, probably. I just noticed that. So th that's another thing, we got a, a separate type of um, softwall top to this. This one in this case is top two. So we're going to have to look in a different area. Either that or we're going to have to adjust this uh, softwall top too. Yeah, let me let me uh, just look around here. So soft wall, top. So all this did not change. So where's the soft wall top applied? That is the question. <laughs> I thought I had the proper texture. I'll be honest. So we already applied. Okay, so. Where are we using softwall top? I guess that's the question. The one I just adjusted anyway. So this one's obviously using softwall top too. So we'll have obviously, based on this information, we're gonna have to change that. Hey, how we doing there, Richard James? Um, started restoring basement window frames. Lost track of time. Oh, that sounds like fun. It won't change the seams. Okay, so. Yeah, and that's something else I wanted to show, just, just for clarity at least anyway. So I need to adjust the softwall top too. So let's take a look at that texture. I don't know where you've got the uh, softwall top uh, when I just adjust applied. Not seeing any change there, so... Uh, let's do softwall top. We got a lot of different softball tops actually. The only one I'm concerned with are the ones that are relatively white, I suppose. Alright, where's softball top? Why am I not seeing this? Softball top to inner side R. Am I just blind? What the heck? <laughs> Softwall top too, so it should be in here. Whoopsie. Top. Why am I not seeing this? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Gotta scroll down a little bit. So there's the softwall top too. All right, so we need to adjust this one as well. Fair enough. So this one is at a two, already as it should be. So let's do bitmap on this. File save as. And put that into our Dover track, track map folder. There we go. Close that out. Now I'm going to make a copy of this one too. Put that on the desktop. So we have it as a backup. Yep. So we'll go softball top two. Which is right here. So I'm going to copy this out. Put that to the desktop just for safekeeping. So as we make these adjustments in here, we want to be able to have something to fall back on, at least anyway. That's the only reason we're doing that. Paste. Cool. So other than the fact that I'm not 100% sure where you got softball top applied, um, it seems like the majority of your textures are softball top too. Easier to adjust texture, I promise. Well, we're going to find out. That's what we're doing this for. So, um... All right, go to our tra Nova track build here. Track. Third party and our Dover track build. The track map. And we should have softball top two, which is this one. Cool, so now I need to adjust this one as well. So what I'm going to do is basically use this same one here. Um. Yeah, so I'll be able to open this up on the desktop. Yep, we got that copy there. So let's do this. 
I can also do it this way. There's a couple different ways I go, but let's go ahead and do this. We'll do a copy and edit paste this as a new image. That'll be easier. But we'll need to adjust where that um, seam is, which is more in the middle of this one in this case. So we need to get this. Proper spot there. Okay, cool. Now we're going to use. Um, yeah, so I didn't mean to copy that. I was just trying to remember what I did there. Okay, cool. Got to reposition some things here. Keeping all these things open here just in case we need to uh, go back to it. Let's do that. That. And size this one up as well. So I'm not changing the size of it, I'm just changing the way it, uh, the view of it, I guess is, it here. so I'm just lining these up like so. So we need to put a seam on this one here, we need to remove this one. This one's already flattened down, in fact, what I'm going to do is back this one up, get that back into the layers, and then we can just take this out of here, we can easily just clone that out. I'm going to promote this to a layer, like that. And then we want to take that line out. There we go. Now we want to add a line. That seems cool. So let's go to line. We're going to create a new layer. So we can put that line in. So like so. Something like that. Oh, I don't like how that turned out there. Turn out darker. Second here. I'm being picky. Okay. Now we can adjust. <clears throat> now I'm trying to remember what I did adjust this one to. I can actually, now that I've reopened that. Um, hmm. Let's go back into here. So we set that to 53%. So I can set that same one there. So we got the same level of opacity as we do on that one. So 53%. It's right about there. So now we got the same level of opacity on this texture as we do for that one. So now what we want to do with all that saved up there, this is going to be our new soft wall top two. Okay, so we'll go on this one here. We'll do layers, merge, all flatten. File, save that one into, yep, our Dover track build and our track map as a bitmap. Overwrite that. And just like the other one, we want to make sure we've got a map of two onto that. So open this one up. We've already got that copied over the desktop, so we have that for uh, safekeeping. MIP and changes to a two. Uh, did I put that in the right spot? I bet you I didn't. Hold on, let me open this up here really quick. I bet you I did not. Nope, sure didn't. All right, so I didn't have that lined up right. It's already boo-booed, so that's no problem. We'll make that adjustment. No problem, let's get out of that. This is the original texture, by the way. All right, so, oh, I see what I did. No problem. So we can move this uh, layer, so we got that in a separate layer. So it actually, oh, for crying out loud, I don't wanna do this. Let's zoom this out so that it doesn't have the scrolling bar. There we go. There we go, now we are talking. Let's line this up like that. That was what was screwing us up. There, so now we know how much we need to adjust it. So all I need to do is back this up like this, get it back to that layer, and we can actually slide that layer over. Like so. Actually tweak on it too while we're at it. There we go. 
Okay, now we'll do layers, merge all flatten. Try that again. File, save as. Overwrite that. We'll open it back up. I could already tell I knew it was more in the middle there, so that's why I had to look at the original texture that's still in here and we haven't saved over it yet. That looks better. So I'll go MIP. Change this to 2. And now we can save over that. And as I said, I got that original uh, texture uh, copied over to our desktop. So we can definitely go with that. Uh, Going to have to change the soft little top red stripe. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. The only thing I'm really focusing on at this point is just the white the white deals, right? We'll have to see. We're going to apply this out there and we'll see exactly how it looks. We may not, we may not even want to go this route. We're going to put this playing around with some stuff to see what uh, kind of look we can get here. So, again, it's not going to show right away once we save it. So, we got to do reload MIPS. Now, we should see this change. We should see this color shift. Give it a second. I'm not seeing it shift all that much. What the heck, man? Definitely not seeing that. I expected to shift quite a bit more than that. What the heck, man? Yeah, it, just with the... Um... Right, hold on. Let me open this one up again. Do, 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 do. Definitely should have seen a shift in that anyway. So there we got this one. That's our new texture. And I want to open up the original texture that's on the desktop. Yeah, so I should have definitely seen a lot more shift than we did there. This one's definitely got more of a, like a greenish blue uh, tint to it. It's a little bit darker. So it must have been just really, really subtle. I expected to see a little bit more of a shift in that as well. Now, when we look at it from this standpoint, though, you can see with the shading on that there, in comparison, let's shift this down here a little bit. You can see how much more contrast there is between without shading and with the shading. So that gives you somewhat of an idea. Now, we can always make a separate um, shade, you know, type of shade, I guess, for this backside here to be able to accommodate the look of this, uh, this new safer uh, top texture. That's definitely a thing we can do as well. I'm just using, attempting to use, I guess, some light maps that are already in the track, so. Um, what it did on your end as far as the shift quite a bit. Now, I can compare this. Now, the fact that I've got these two textures open, you can definitely see there's a difference there. It was a very subtle change. I guess I just expected to see a little bit more drastic shift in there. All this really means is like we can we can take the initiative, I guess, to make a uh, a texture. Now I do have a texture. Um, let's see if I can remember what one I did use there in another track build that we can potentially apply to that. That's already made up. You know, we wouldn't even have to create it. Uh, let me go. That's going to be back to, back to. Darlington 15 build, I believe. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. I got I lost myself there a little bit. So Darlington 15. This one never was released. Just for fair mention there. So I do think it was either this one. No. Or was this one here a second? I'm recalling completely from memory, so that's just a... Um, hold on a second. Well, I think it was this one right here. Maybe not. Shoot, I might have to open up the track to actually remember, because as far as which one I did use. Is that all? I know I have a uh, specific, it might have been that backside. Okay, so what I might have to do, just so I can get some clarity as far as what texture I did use on that, on the Darlington build anyway, it might have been this one. 
but I need to find out for sure. So let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and save this progress here for now. Save as, and we're gonna do pit wall shady. I'm gonna save right over this one here. This is all for testing anyway, so it's I'm not even 100% sure that we'll end up using it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save right over that. We didn't make a lot of big drastic changes to it. So that, that'll be perfectly fine to overwrite that PTF. So if it did corrupt or whatever like that, we would just have to reapply everything we just did. This is all for testing right now, so it's all good that way. So I'm gonna open up this Dover build, or uh, Darlington build, I'm sorry. Uh, so Darlington 15, boom. I just wanna confirm uh, which texture I did use for the back. So this will kind of give you the direction I'm trying to go with. Now granted, this is at a night track, but it gives you some uh, idea of what, what I was shooting for, I guess as far as to create this cavity uh, where the foam actually resides. Okay. Just kind of get it like it all belongs together type of thing. So when I want to find out what I use here for texture on this shading here on the wall here, want to get to that and check that out. I need to confirm it's it might have been that wall backside. I'm not 100% sure. It's been a while since I've worked on this one. So I have to refresh my memory. All right, so let's do Oops. We need to go into properties. So we need the right side wall and go to light map. Nope, so it is the LM wall inside. Okay. Wasn't even close. Wasn't even either one of those. Okay, so that's why I needed to open it up to see what I did use. All right, so. Yeah, so it's this one right here. This is what I used right there. So this has a little bit of a gradient. It's darker on the bottom and lighter on the top. Now, we can use a variation of this. Now, granted, this is designed more for a night track, um, as this is depicted here. So we can definitely change the intensity, I guess, of that if we need to. Okay. So at least we know now which texture it is. What the heck happened there? Why is that buried? That's weird. Holy crap, it doesn't do it this angle. <laughs> I just happened to notice how that was buried. This one here. That's weird. I never noticed that before. Anyway. We're not worried about this track for now. I just wanted to get that texture. So there we go. So this is the texture I want to bring over to our Dover build. Potentially and see how that looks. We might need to adjust the intensity, I guess, of that shading. It might be a little too... Uh, a little bit much. But let's go ahead and bring that over. So if we got go over to that track folder. Du -du 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 -du. Oh du -du. where are we at? Fifteen track mat. And this one right here. So do copy. So initially, we'll get, at least get an initial look uh, to see how it'll uh, appear, I guess, on a Dover build. Okay, so we'll put that right in our track map. That is a light map, so we'll put that right there. We can always rename this, too, if we wanted to. Definitely don't have to. You can leave it just like that. Okay. Alrighty then. So I'm going to go ahead and just open this up. This one. Whoops, my bad. Double click on that. Open that track back up. Let's see what we got. Okay, then a second to load up. Oh, we're learning some stuff here, at least, anyway. That's the whole intention, I guess, of having the Splines Line Studio Saturday. Alright, so here we go. Let's get back to. That area over here, over by the restart zone. 
all right now I'm starting to see the difference there so I get maybe that reload yeah definitely can see that difference now from here to here I don't know maybe it was just my eyes but yeah all right so let's um, get to here cool now we need to get to that W section wall section over here and I picked this area because it's a little bit easier to spot um, the fact that it's got that top wall texture there make it easier on myself I guess as far as to show these types of things all right so what we want to do is get to the right side of this and go to light map and currently we've got wall shadow we want to change that to that one we just put in there which was the LM right here so we're not we're not using it yet so we're at that so it's a little dark so we can definitely adjust it so just like I expected there it was going to be a little bit dark so we can adjust that though it's got that gradient from dark to light I guess towards the top so what we can do from here I'm going to open this up from our Dover track build right now we're in there so we want to get back to the Dover track build chase gosh darn track map and then open up this one right here so what we'll do is we'll make a bitmap out of this file save as and we're making sure that we've got that in there properly cool and then we'll open this up in our paint program that should be right here cool so from here we can adjust that intensity here okay so first of all what I want to do is promote this to a layer so we can actually work with it let's do that and then let's change the opacity something like that now what we'll probably have to do is still apply some white behind it as another separate layer yeah more than likely so let's go do another layer it may um it, by saving that it might actually apply the, the appropriate level of white that we want to it so that might be fine I mean I don't even need to do that let's try this though so if we go layers merge all flatten that might be good enough just like that we'll try it this way Okay, so let's do save as, save over that, cool, now we want to open up that texture, that ended up being, let's close this one, reopen this, now we want to get the parameters for that one there, that one's also set to 2, it's like all of our um, uh, track wall fit in our track mat, so I just wanted to get that confirmed before I open up the bitmap and resave over that. So this is our new one with the different intensity there. MIP, change this to a 2. File, save as. Saving into our Dover track mat folder. Overwriting that, yes. Okay, now if we go into here, we should be able to use our reload MIP, so we should definitely see a, a shift in that intensity there. There we go. That's still a little too dark. So we can definitely go down a little bit more probably. But you, you kind of get the idea there as far, as far as what I'm going for. At least anyway. Um, something else I guess I can look at too. Just Since we're kind of going back and forth between these different track builds as far as... Uh, we've taken some textures from the Texas build. As, all, as well as the uh, Darlington 15 build. We can definitely play around with these different ones to see um, which one's work better so even by using one from another track or all from the same track you can see at least by plugging them in there to see what kind of differences we're getting anyway, anyway. and if one of them suits as far as uh, if it suits what we're trying to accomplish here then go for it. go with it um, let me look at I'm gonna go with the Darlington build that's what I want 
Okay, so go back to Darlington 15 bill. Yeah, so hopefully the bouncing back and forth, I guess, from one track to the next isn't getting too confusing. But there's different levels of shading applied to these different track builds. I guess that's the point I was trying to make. Uh, as far as for the safer foam and all that, anyway. Alright, so we need... Nope, I didn't want that. I wanted the uh, starter, starter block. That's right. My bad. Got ahead of myself. So I, I didn't want the starter block for here. Right here. So what I want to do is compare. So this is, should be pretty much the same as the Texas one was. There shouldn't be too much different there. So we open, let's open the one that we have for our Dover build. Octane coming in with alert. Give it alert. All right, so let's go. Tracks, and then go to our Dover Bill. Just gonna go into third party. Yep. And nope, I keep going to track mag. Need the one styrofoam block here. So I just want to compare these two in WinMip two at least anyway. It shouldn't be too much difference there anyway. Other than the fact that we've got that um, shading on the top part here is all. Actually, there's a little bit of a difference there, yeah. Very, very subtle, but it is very much different. You can see that. This one's got a little bit more of a darker hue, I guess, than this one. This is from the... I just pulled this one from the uh, Darlington build. This is from Texas. So again, you can see those different levels of shading you got applied too. That's very subtle. But that might make the uh, the difference, I guess, as far as uh... just out of curiosity, though, I'm gonna plug, and I still have this open in here. I guess as far as what we've been doing here, just to make a simple swap. Oh uh, yeah, let me do this really quick. I can always revert back, so we'll, I'll get there. So let's go from our Darlington bill. I'm just really curious how this would look. So let's get the starter block from here. Oh my goodness, I keep getting lost. There we go. I always pray staring me right in the face and it's always been overlook it. So copy that over to our Dover build. I'm just really cool. Uh, really interested to see how this would look anyway. Dude. So paste this. Boom. Yes. Now we can. Now the fact that this is a. Uh, again, to read this reiterate, in order to get that new texture to show, um, and it's not on a model and not the geometric um, pieces, geometric part, we're going to have to reload the track in order to get that to. That's the only downside, I guess, as far as like having 3D pieces as opposed to geometric pieces. Not being able to, because if I do the reload MIPS uh, with, by putting that, that's not going to work. As far as to apply that new texture to our foam. Okay, so we have to reload it this way. And I don't want to do that. The only reason why it gave me that, again, just to reiterate, summary. Because I selected that, uh, ge that geometric uh, wall section, even though I didn't do anything to it, it Sandbox is still saying, hey... You touch this, so you sure you don't want to save? Yeah. All right, so let's just go ahead and reload it up here. Third party, Dover Chase, and we want to load in this one right here. Yep. So we got a couple different ones here. We did a couple changes uh, to the track that Torch has already um, sent over to us. All right, so let's go back over to that area by the restart zone. I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point as far as like that, but now we can see a definite difference already. I'm already seeing this looks, I don't know. It could be just me that it looks a ton better. <laughs> yep, so if we were to add, let me add some more shading. 
to this part here, so that should be more behind. Let's see here. Could definitely just be just me, but I'm seeing some uh, some definite improvements on it. This is all going to depend on you know greatly, I guess, on just um, how you being the check builder as far as how it looks to you. So the fact that I didn't save that with the that new texture there, that was still too dark. So we're still got on the, on the wall shadow. I can go back and forth at this point, I guess, to see which one is going to look better. Uh, so we want... Let's go into properties. Gosh darn it. Keep the camera up, thank you. Alright, so let's go to... Um, which one am I on here? Left... Oh, that's on the light map, gotcha. Cool. So let's do just for sake of this here, I want to go to all shadow. What part of that track am I in? Should be right behind. Oh, this might have two more than one texture sync. Okay, never mind. We're okay. Let's check our texture sync here. So if we go to two, yep. So let's do wall shadow. Uh oh, we got more than two. All right. Let's put it in all of them. There it is. So even with that already, that's to me. I don't know. It could be just me. That almost looks pretty, pretty good. I'm digging that. Now the only thing I didn't do with swapping that texture out, and we'll be able to see that over here. Um, it's going to step on that shadowing that's on the top uh, part of the foam and we can fix that by adjusting that texture so it's not going to have the proper or does it that's supposed to be over here right yeah I think some of this might be screwed up no, no actually it looks fine what the heck is that not where that texture is supposed to be applied or that part of the texture anyway thought we made that clear so this piece here I did not put that when I copied that over from Darlington um, it didn't have this piece on there still seeing that sh shading on that part or was that over here I don't know that looks good maybe I'm missing something <laughs> Yeah, so even without putting, so what we have, let's open this texture here, so that what we have on to the track at this moment is this foam without this on it. All right? And just to clarify, let's do this. We're in our Dover build. Start a foam block. Boom. See, we don't have that applied to it. Uh, those are different texture. No inside back stretch wall. Okay. All right. So I just wanted to get clarification. I guess as far as so this here is for the inside wall, and not under the bridge. Gotcha. Okay. That's why I'm not seeing that change. So the fact that we haven't applied this to our texture yet, that's what I wanted to make sure. We'll have to make that adjustment if that's what we want to go with, at least anyway. So it's going to be these here. Gotcha. So see how that's just applying flat, solid white. I see it now. So until we get that applied to that there, that's it's still going to show just a solid white. Yep. Now that you pointed that out, that makes sense. Okay. So if we do want to go with this uh, particular foam texture, which I'm not disliking it, it's a little bit of an improvement, I feel. Let's go back over here. So let's go back here. Alright, so we'll go back to the restart zone where we applied all the shading here. Yeah, so we can see where that ends here. Let's 
go further up the way here. So we got no shading here. Okay, that's where that ends. So, what I'm also curious to see, let's apply, so let's go ahead of this uh, general tire deal here. Right now, we're right on top of it, cool. All right, so let's go this way, forward. Let's get into here. And I wanna apply So we gotta go over here. And I wanna put that LM Yeah, this one right here. So it's probably still a little too dark, and that's fine. You can always adjust that. Okay, now with that applied there, I'm going to go ahead and adjust this a little bit further. Let's back this up. And we'll tone this down a little bit more. Okay, now we'll do layers, merge all, flatten. File, save as. Boom, boom. And we're doing this all in the Dover uh, track map build anyway. Let's open up the MIP. We gotta reopen it. Track map. Open this back up. Yep. Put this to a two. Save as. Dover track map. Yes. I'm gonna go ahead and close that right away. Now from here we should be able to reload MIPS and we should see that shift in the uh, intensity of that. So we go to the properties here and reload MIPS. Oh, see now we're getting somewhere. See, you can tell that difference now. So we got that darker on the bottom towards the top. Now if we were to apply that all the way through, let's go back this way. Uh, I'll have to apply it all the text sakes of this. We'll do. Da, 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 da. So, this one right here, let's apply it all the way through. So, it shows I'm what we're looking in their camera viewport here. Yep, see it just barely in the, in the picture there. One more. Oh man, it's looking pretty good, I feel. We're getting somewhere. I am not disliking that. I almost feel the, um, the starter foam blocks are still a little bit off. As far as it not being nested into that cavity. That's the only thing I'm still keeping into context here. Now, it could be just this um, area of the track that I'm looking at. Uh, we would probably definitely have to look at it um, in the in, in the sim itself to actually see how it looks there, because it's definitely going to probably look different than what we see here. So that might have not have been the best um, area, I guess, to be able to depict here, possibly. Uh, let me try a different area of the track here. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go down this way. I'll buy the start finish line. So let's try just ahead of this black logo, for example. Let's... Yeah, that still looks pretty good. All right. So let's go here. We'll try it from here. I think with applying that shading there, that might actually look good as far as making it look like these foam is a little bit more nested. So let's uh, go to that area of the track. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Zoom this out. 
So we're just before here. Yeah, so right about there. Should be good. So we'll camera. So let's apply some shading on the right side of this wall. So we're already in light map right side. Let's put that LM. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's such a major change there. In a good way. <laughs> that looks fantastic in my opinion. Yeah, so I like that that contrast between the concrete wall. You could probably even apply the same uh, deal onto the concrete, and it might even add a little bit more to. In fact, let's see how that looks if we do that. So if we go to the concrete wall, let's put this on base texture here just for a second. So I want to go to the right until we get to that wall. So now we're on the concrete wall. But we want to go left side, so obviously that's going to be this side here. And go back to light map. Don't have anything on there currently, so let's put the LM on that. And see how that changed. It almost looks to me like the foam would still need to be uh, adjusted the shading a little bit. First, to make it look a little bit more nested. Not terrible though. So we can. Uh... Okay, let's save this here real quick. File save as. I'm gonna save right over that. This is all for testing anyway. All right. So what I'll need to do is close that out and. I want to adjust the texture, the shading of that foam. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna have to make a new bitmap for that, unfortunately. All right, so this is what we currently have in the track, right here. This is what we swapped over from our uh, Darlington 15 track. Uh, so far, these are pretty good to go. I haven't seen any major shifts um, that's going to require, you know, so putting it to a two, it didn't really uh, require, I guess they have to realign up those seams anyway so far, which is good. Uh, so this is what we swapped over from the 15. This is what we currently, or what we had previous to that to take, and you know, with that shading that's on top of here. Definitely can see the difference in the whiteness of this one in comparison. So I think by adjusting, I don't know, we might have to go back to this one to see how that looks. Yeah, yeah. So right from here, what I can do, yeah, right from here, what I can do is I can just resave that while it's still in WinMIP2 and save over that uh, bitmap, and I can always, again, just swap it back if I want to. Go back and forth while it's in here in WinMIP2. So let's do on this one. File save as. We're in our Dover track mat. Or uh, actually, we need to be in the root, not the track mat. That's a model, not a uh, geometric texture. So go back to here and save that as start old form. Start old block. I want to overwrite that, yes. Now we need to reload the track. Now it should load this texture up. This is the one we previously had where we adjusted this. So I just want to see the differences between how this one looks with all that shading. Um, the light map shading that we applied to the both the, the inside safer and the concrete. And just make a comparison here. All right, so let's load the track back up. And just like I've mentioned, uh, the only way to get the texture uh, to refresh onto a model is you have to reload the track. Can't use that uh, reload uh, MIPS function. That's only for geometric uh, textures. All right, so. Let's go to our start finish line here. See how that looks. Yeah, see this has got more of a blue hue to it. Personally, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> so 
So we almost need something, I feel, that's in between these two. In between that one and this one. So between this one and this one. So we need something like in the middle of those. I think we should be Gucci. Go back to that. Yeah, I feel this one's got more of like a blue hue. That makes sense. It's really hard to tell, I guess, the fact that there isn't any shading at all on that concrete. You can the only difference you can see is right there. This is where I get really picky, I guess, as far as like that. This is what I, the same process that I went through as far as to get that proper amount of uh, nested, you know, type of look, I guess, to uh, that safer foam in comparison to the geometric, anyway. Same process. Um, you got wonder how the original looks uh, now with the shading. Um, good question. So the fact that I still got the original texture, I can definitely take a look. So the fact that these two that we've applied here, these are modified ones from the original, right? So we can definitely see how that looks. Yeah. Yeah. Now that we've got all three of them, I guess to be able to compare now. Again, we'll have to close the track out because it is a model texture. Let's uh, copy that back from the desktop and we save that for safekeeping and put that back in there. So that one is right here. Copy that. And paste that into our root track. Edit here. Paste. Over right. Yes, please. Now we got to reload the track. Let's see how that one looks. Doesn't hurt to try and Let's see how it is. Uh, more black. More black over the. What do you mean? Let's do that. All right. Let's see how this one looks. So this is the original one. Still got that blue hue to it. Kind of bugs me. I know it's just a, maybe a personal thing, but so again, now we can look at all these now that we've tried out. So this one's from the Darlington that we swapped out. We didn't adjust the top portion here. This was our first initial try. So now it'll open up is what we got in there currently. Uh, so we'll go back to our root track folder and just kind of make these comparisons. Now, it may necessarily make a difference. The fact that I'm only looking at this through Sandbox, um, it probably would behoove me, I guess, to actually look and see what it looks like in the sim. Now, when I showed the the way the texture looks on the Darlington build, that's a, like a one-to-one -one there. So I guess that's kind of what I'm holding on to, I guess, as far as if it's looking nested, you know, with the 3D foam, with the geometric. In Sandbox, it should definitely, uh, it should transverse I guess is how it looks in the sim so so let's open up this starter block this is the original so we can see all these oh yeah there's a definite difference in there so this has got a lot more blue hue to it not as much and hardly any at all so where I'm feeling what needs to happen here at this point is we need somewhere in between this one and this one this one's kind of not an option to me. <laughs> so we need something in between these two, I feel. So in order to do that, I would need to take this one here and just kind of play around with it until we get it offset, I guess, to this one, if that makes sense. And so what we got in our paint shop here is this one here that we got loaded here. This one's going to be this one here. So what we would have to do, I feel, is probably apply a different uh, level shading. Man, I hate to put more than it's already there, to be honest. That seems like I got a ton of shading on that. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So again, this is the current one that we have there. So let's see what kind of adjustment we can make here anyway. What can we do? Uh, part of the thing I do want to do, I do have, and this is not the extended version um, of our safer phone. This is one of the older textures. I do have that in my archives. I'll go ahead and load that up. We're going to play around with this a little bit. Yeah, kind of in that fiddling around mood. Let's do... Um, just got to find it. So, mesh. We're going deep here. We're going down the Wayback Machine. So yeah, this would be the original texture that we had there. We do now have the extended, which uh, corrects a lot of issues. It gets as far as just uh, backwards mapping. I guess as far as uh, being able to put uh, logos onto it and such like that. This is one of our newer textures. Uh, back from April 17. This goes back to April 14. This is one of the original templates that we had there. So that's based. That's what this is based on. So you can really see the, the differences that we got. So this is what we got in here currently. Right? So even from this one here, you can see it's a lot more white. <laughs> Let's do this. So we're going to go ahead and make a new texture based on this and save that to our door uh, track build and see what this looks like. And we can always add uh, what we need to it if that looks uh, to our liking. So yeah, this is based on our original texture here. Let's go ahead, layers, merge. I almost feel, even with that being said, we're going to have to apply a little bit darker uh, than what's already here, but we're gonna find out here. So let's do a merge, flatten this one. File, save as. And we're gonna go to our Dover track build. Uh, tracks, third party, Dover, du -du -du -du. Chase, and we want that right in the root as a bitmap. Yes, we want to overwrite this. Now, we still got this one here that we uh, originally tried to apply, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, now with that saved, I should be able to open this up and limit two. So this is our original. We're not going to go with that one. Just putting it right out there. We're not going with that one. <laughs> so, in our Dover track build, open up that new texture we just saved. And the way I can tell this is the right one is it's got these alignment markers in the corners. So I know that's the proper texture that we just saved. So MIP, keep that at a three. File save that. go so now we've got all these different versions here so we we tried this one out we started off with this we tried this one from our Darlington 15 build you can see how much differences there are this is more white so we'll see how this looks that way all right do, 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 do. all right so let's go ahead and reload our track so let's do new open so we can see our new texture camera all right here we go Let's see how we look I think we're getting somewhere now how do we look without the shading on the concrete I almost feel maybe the shading on the concrete doesn't need to be there at least on this front stretch anyway so that goes all the way down here does it where's that stop yeah here it is Hmm. Okay, let's go further down the way here anyway. I think we're just about there. But I'm not 100% sold on having the shading on the concrete, at least in here. It almost looks too dark. Plus, at this point here, if we do keep that, whether we keep that or not, I'm just looking at this here. 
we still need to add a little bit more um, darkness to this current one here. So that would be just a matter of adjusting it here. Now I got these in layers, so we can easily do that. What we don't want to do is get it too close to this one, right? So this is what we got to go by as far as what we initially tried. All right, so got all these nice layers in here. Let's um, let's see here. Yeah, so I got these at varying levels of opacity here. So we need to add a little bit more darkness to the side. That one I don't think we need to adjust at all. So there's the side. There we go. Let's make this a little bit darker. The top I might leave the same. Just put that at hundred percent. Let's see what let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so we don't have that blue hue into that tier two, it's still more white there. Which one's too dark? The way I got over here currently? Or are we talking about uh, the uh, the shading on the cement wall, anyway? I forgot, I kind of went on tangents there. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So let's do layers, merge, all flatten. File, save that. Our Dover build. And create a new mip. Uh, we're going to have to close this one here. And the way, the way I can tell which one it is at this point... Uh, it's because of these alignment blocks on it. We will definitely be able to correct this if this works to our satisfaction. But I need to reopen this bitmap that I just saved. That's the reason I got to close that. Okay. So now we got to go MIP. Good to go. File save as. Start a block. So that. Okay, now we'll reload the track. With that new MIP save. So that's going to be this one right here. Alright, let's see how this one looks. Goodness, we're getting so close. Yes. Yeah. So I think what you were referring to, you feel the sh the wall shading as far as the the concrete part of it anyway is probably too dark. That's kind of where I'm thinking too. At least on this front stretch. So that that's where we can see that variation here. I think we're getting there though. It's looking really good, I feel. Alright, so I don't have any shading here on the safer part, at least anyway. But I do right there. Yeah. So just to kind of show that that is looking pretty delish on good, I feel. I still don't like this, uh, this top wall, as far as the contrast and color to that. It looks good on this side, but just not this side. I don't know why. Not feeling it. There's too much contrast in there. We could definitely still uh, probably adjust this down a little bit, I guess as far as on that there, but I still feel this is off, even if we do do that. Uh, so... Yeah, so what you're saying, Torch, is we probably shouldn't put the shading on the concrete. I'm tending to agree with that. Let's take that one off there for a second. Whoops. Whoop, they're not. We didn't select that wall, so let's zoom in on that. Do, 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 do. Let's 
So we'll go into here. And actually we need to go to the right. Base texture. Yep, so that's our concrete wall. So we want to go into light map. There we go. So we can take that right off. There we go. Yeah, I'm almost thinking that's probably better that way. Yeah, without having the shading on the concrete. But leaving it maybe on the safer. Let me add some more to this here. I, th this top part of the safer, so safer, they're still bugging me so bad. I mean, it's only from this side it looks a little weird as far as this side it looks fine. Yeah, see, I might have screwed up, I guess, as far as where I applied the seam on here, so I might have to make a little bit of adjustment there, but that's that's no no problem there. We'll have to adjust the texture. That's not the skewing. I think I just shifted that off a little bit. That's easily fixable. Yeah. So we do have some shifting in that that top texture there. That's just the texture of the way I put that line is all. That's not. Yeah, that's just off a little bit. This actually doesn't look too bad though, for the most part. That looks a little bit better that way. Yeah. Well, on this part of the track, anyway, as far as the front stretch, I'm gonna take a look on the back stretch here. Because, yeah, that's one place we haven't looked yet. Let's go on the back stretch here. See how it looks on that side. Because we may or may not need to put it there. Possibly not. I think we might be okay there. Nope. I think it will be all right like that. So yeah, just the fact that we've you've gotten rid of that blue hue, I guess that's into that. I think that's uh, definitely a lot better. What's going on with this texture on here? It looks like it's uh, maybe it could be just me. Yeah, I think it's definitely an improvement there. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. So, yeah, we still need to adjust the texture. If we're going to go with this texture, we need to adjust it so we can have that shading on these uh, inside piece of foam. Still got that solid white. But even on this side, we could probably put some shading on this safer wall. That'll make those look more nested there. Let's go over here. Yeah, we definitely do that. Everywhere else looks pretty decent, though. Yeah, probably put some shading on this safer wall. Leave it off that concrete. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's looking like so far we don't need to apply the shading to the concrete, but more to the safer. Just to kind of get that more of that nested look, at least anyway, at this point. Yeah. I think that's where we're at. Just putting the um, shading, just to clarify, the, just putting the shading on the, the safer, uh, back side of the safer, not so much the, the concrete. I think that we'll definitely have something there. I think that's where we're at. So this one's still got the wall shadow. I don't think I did put that gradient one there. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, so at this point here, let's go back to, let's go back a little bit over here. Where's that restart zone right here? So we want to be ahead of the restart zone right there. Yep, so we're looking at this area right here. Go into that. Oh, we got to get on the right side walls, that's right. There we go. Oh, I do have that one on there. Okay, cool. So this one is using that 
<clears throat> that light. This one. Whoops. Yeah, this one right here. So we're using this as our sh shadowing on the back side of our safer. Hmm. What's really still bugging me, I guess, about that soft, that top. That's, eh. So as I looked at over there, that's still kind of bugging me with that. Let's go, let's take a look at what we got in here. So which one do we have? We changed our softball top to, this was our original, which we'll need to adjust that I noticed there, of course, we're off a little bit on the alignment of that. Yeah, so it looks like even by looking at this, I need to shift it this way a little bit. We're not off by much. We're only off like about a couple, couple pixels or so. Uh, so this is our new softball top, which I still don't, not 100% sure where that's being used. This one seems to be the more prominent one. Let me go ahead and make that adjustment on this one here right away. I still feel something needs to be done with this one here to make it less tinted, I guess for lack of a better way to put it. Yeah, because when I look at this, it's got, it doesn't really pair up, I guess, with what we've got. So, I almost feel this this level shading on the back side of the safer is good, uh, but it doesn't pair up very nice with, I guess, with the way this uh, softball top looks, anyway. Uh, see a little more shade on the top of the phone, maybe? You think more shade on the phone, top of the phone? I got that um, maxed out, I guess, as far as the shading on that. Um, and I was thinking in terms of, because you're going to have more sunlight, I guess, hitting the top of it than you will, like, the sides. So that's kind of what I was going with on there. I kind of like, honestly, I guess, the way the, the foam itself looks. What I'm not 100% sold on is how this uh, shading here on the back side of the wall looks. In comparison to the, the top. Now there's no shading. I guess that's a probably fair mention. We don't have any shading on the top. Of that there. And that might be what's causing it to get thrown off. Because there should be. Because we do have it on the concrete. But not on the on top of the safer. Maybe. I'm just spitballing at this point. Do, 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 do. All right, so it could be me, Torch, but I think uh, may need to refresh the streams. I think you're you're a little bit of delayed behind there, so it might have got. So I feel like my responses to your responses and vice versa. I guess are gonna. There's probably a good 10 second delay there. It seems. Do, do, do. All right, so let's. Um, First off, let's go ahead and adjust this line. I gotta move it this way a little bit as well. Not too hard to do. So let's shift this over. Well, like that. Merge all flatten. File save as. Softle top two. Let's open up that softle top two. Soft wall top two. Yep. And we'll make the submit. Change it to a two. File save as. See right over top of that. And we want this in the uh, track mat. Not in the. Yeah, so that's probably a fair mention there. Yeah. That is a track mat item. Yes, we want to overwrite that. This we can do a reload since that is a geometric texture so let's go back over here where we saw it was definitely shifted we should see that line up better so let's go to reload mips give that a second damn still needs to go that way so we get, we went into the right direction but just not enough <laughs> 
shifted just a tad, so we gotta shift it a little bit more. Okay. Uh, what about some fence shading on the soft wall? Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. Um, yeah, that's a that's a possibility. That could be what's throwing it off a little bit. All right, let's move this over a little bit more this way. Oops. All right, well, like that. Layers. Right. Save as. And we need to close this one. Already save that. Open up our new texture. Yeah. No, I could definitely try it. Yep. Two. File. Save as. Track map. Yes. Alright, let's reload those MIPS. Trying to get this relined back up. This is based on our new texture anyway. Reload. There we go. That's more better. Cool beans. So let's go apply some uh, fence shading on this. I don't know how this is going to look um, as far as like what type of uh, skewing we'll have to put on it or whatever, but. We'll try it out and see what happens here. Just to see. I'm definitely digging the foam um, as far as that goes. I'm just not liking the... Uh, so much contrast, I guess, between our shadow on our backside of our wall and the top. That's the only thing that's really looking... Okay, so... Fence shading. Let's go to the top of that safer. Yep, still in that part there. Cool. Um, we need to be on the top. And for now, let's go back to base. Let's make sure that's where we're at. Cool. Let's go to the right so I can get to this. I need to see what this is set up for that light map. Oh, yowza. Okay. So, L. L wall T2. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to use my little snipping tool here. Boom. Snipping tool is my friend when it comes to that. I'm not going to try and remember all that information. So, I'll be able to refer to that. So, now if we go back to the left base it's off the top too so now we can go back into the light map and we can apply that same texture L wall T2 so we gotta go through our list mm -mm. there we go and now we gotta put the proper texture size 4.62 and 0.60 and how do we look ooh that's definitely not looking the best all right so we're gonna have to put a different texture size on that because the fact that this is a different um geometric size i guess than the uh okay Yeah, so we definitely can't put the same uh, texture parameters uh, for that light map on there. So that's kind of stinky. I just want to double check and make sure I did put the right one on there too. Let's compare notes here. Um, oh, it's 482, my bad. Not 462. Make any difference? Not really. 
Not really. Yeah, so it's, it'd be a matter of getting the proper uh, texture size, I guess I said on that's so. all. I don't know, is that right? Maybe that is right in comparison. So it's basically the same. No. What the heck are we trying to line this up with anyway? Hmm. Yeah, that's totally out of whack there. Not really sure what else to... Alright. Let's go... Back to base, so that's on our top safer. Right. All top, go back to the white map. Just double checking to make sure we got the right one on there anyway. So it looks like we do. I'm not sure why there's such a big difference, I guess, as far as the skewing of that anyway. Shouldn't be that much a difference there. But there definitely is. That's a bummer. So that way it would take a big you take get some work and you'd have to play around with that a little bit, I guess to get that to line up, unfortunately. But what I don't like, as far as even what that applied the way it is, there's too much contrast here, I guess as far as that just doesn't look right to me. Now, the fact that I've got this texture uh, designed the way it is, uh, could definitely be uh, part of the issue there too. Here. Yeah, it definitely would help too. I don't even I wouldn't even know where to start to get that skew right, I guess as far as for that light map on there. That would take a lot of playing around with, I guess we'd be able to figure it out here. Let's see. Base. Go back to the left. So we're on the top with the safer. Let's go back to the light map. Start off with one here and just kind of go from there. Not really sure why it would be that much different, to be honest. Okay, that's at one. Let's try it two. That is nowhere close to even lining up. Okay, what's half of uh, 4.82? I'm just curious here. Just curious. So 4.82 divided into 2.41. Just curious here. Oh, I think we might have hit something there. Maybe? Maybe not. Possibly? Let me check that. I mean, it might be just having to put that at halfway. <clears throat> We're about half the thickness of this wall, so that might be part of that. That's what I was thinking on that anyway. That could be the answer there. Let's try this on this part here. Let's go up, up a tick here. Still on the safer wall, so let's do. So 2.41. And we need to put this at uh, 60. Yep, that might be the answer for that. It's just half the texture size. That's lining up that pole with that one there. I think that might not be too bad. Now, what I don't still like is how this uh, the shading on the back side of the safer looks. So we might have to adjust that.
Now I'm just curious now. Let's go to the right side walls. Let me try something here. This might be getting really out of whack here, but... Oh, James is playing the slots with some authority. And still didn't get anything. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so let's do uh, right side walls. And let's see if we can apply that same light map here. Okay, let's see what we got here. So if we go, just curious to see how this is gonna look. 2.41. Nope, this is probably not gonna work here. Okay, I had to try it at least anyway just to see. So that's only for a top texture there. So that's, I had to try it anyway. <laughs> let's put that back onto there. What? How does the uh, wall shadow look? That's a little bit lighter. Okay. Oh, you know what? The other thing I did do. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We gotta go back to here. Change this. Okay, that's not a big deal. Okay, cool. Yep, that one shouldn't matter. Um, but as being, <laughs> yeah, I had to try it out anyway. As far as that fence, but that's only for the top, so I don't think that's gonna work in our favor. So really, it's gonna come down to is getting this uh, the safer uh, shading, I guess, to kind of balance out between the the fence. Um, shading here and also the uh, yeah yeah so I don't think we're too far off on that it looks so what I'm looking at as far as like how this pole orientation kind of extends out I guess to the, uh, the track here it's not terrible that way so yeah, really what our focus on is on this point, if we go with that fencing, uh, fence shadow and shading on the safer, it's just a matter of getting the shading on the, the back side of the safer, I guess, to balance out. So what we were using here, and this, uh, is not working. Let's put it that way. Alright, so, out of curiosity, I want to open up that wall shadow one here. So let's go open... Yeah, that's going to be this one here. That's definitely a lot lighter than this one. Yep, so we can just hit this more or less the same. Now this one's at a zero and this one's at a two. I guess that, I don't know if that necessarily make a difference. I'm definitely seeing that this being more lighter than that. So probably what we're gonna need to probably try and do is get this same level of shading onto that um, the back side of the safer. So, so more like this is what's gonna have to happen. I feel. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to our Paint Shop Pro. So we need to get that shading that we have applied in this fashion, much the same here. Let's see if we can get that lined up that way. Um.
Um, yeah, as far as light maps, they usually are zero. The fact that I had this one too. Um, and keeping in mind that I took this one from the Darlington build, right? So this is not coinciding with what we've got for. You can do it either way on light maps here. It's just a matter of you don't really need to skew um, light maps uh, usually so much. Like in this orientation, in comparison to like the fence lighting, which you would. This one you wouldn't. So this one here, I've got all that texture skewing, I guess, turned off. So again, just to kind of show what I mean here. So this wall inside, I don't have any textures, so it doesn't really matter as far as if you have it at zero or two. The only thing, the only time it's going to make a difference is if you need to skew it as far as to shift it forward, backward, up and down, what, what have you. In this case, we don't need to. All right, so what we need to do is line up our... Now, the other thing I need to keep in mind as far as the shading that we're applying uh, to this texture, this is based on a model. This is based on geometric texture. Going to be a big difference with that. So that's something I have to keep in mind, I guess, as far as applying this anyway. Um... So we've already gone to the extreme as far as to make that much darker. And that didn't work out too well. Hmm. Yeah, so if I keep it just that original darkness, that's way too dark. Even you know when I compare that to what we've got on our object, right? That would seem to coincide, but that's definitely what we can't do. Because this is geometric texture, object texture. <clears throat> um just trying to think of what direction I need to go with this uh light map for that back side of the city for anyway. Let's see. We already know this is too much, that's too so I toned it down. I'd almost hate to go too light. I mean, we can even go to the extreme and apply a different uh, safer texture on the back side in comparison to the front side when it's not, with no logo. That's the other thing I think of as well. Because if we remove the um, shading altogether, that's definitely too far off, I feel. Um, let's see here. So if we turn this off. Yeah, that definitely, that's way too much contrast there. So it definitely needs to have some type of shading. Okay. I'm gonna try to go more of the darker route, but just not go quite as dark. So I'll, I'll set this back. Yeah, let's go back. So this is the full dark. We'll go back to about there, just out of curiosity. Do a little bit more that way. Okay, let's try that again. Some layers, move it off there. Okay, and we'll do file save as. This should be in our Dover build. Just making sure. Yep. Okay, and then. Close these. Reopen that. Really, that 
mapping is not going to matter because we're not applying any skewing to it. Uh, you can definitely just put it at whatever. But I'm just keeping it in line as what I kept on the, on the Darlington build anyway. So door track map, yes. Alright, so we can reload. Without getting out, so let's do that. Reload. Hmm. It's adding like a brown, purplish shoe to it, and that's what's bugging me. It looks so crappy. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it just does not look right. Hmm. So this is the difference in what I guess what I consider I guess as far as doing a night track as opposed to a day track. I haven't really played around with this too much up until now, I guess, as far as to add the, that nesting feeling, I guess, to the foam on a day track. I've definitely done it on a night track, as I've shown with the Darlington build. And it could be me just being really, really, really super duper picky, but I guess... There's that. That's still got that fence shading on this part here, which I need to fix. That's still just a placeholder there. That definitely doesn't look good. I don't feel. Alright, so. Hmm. I also feel it's not really giving me that much of a gradient anymore. You know, more darker towards the bottom. As it should be. Okay, let's back this up. Did I, I? I might have to go look back into the uh, Darlington build to see if I did have a skew on that. Maybe I did. That's why probably why I put it to a two. I might have to open that up and see. I did not uh, observe that. I know there's probably a reason that I did put the the map of a two on it. So I'm wondering if it does need to have a skew on it. I might check that out. Let's go ahead and save this track the way it is for now. Yeah, let's do that. Save as. Boom. We'll get down to the bottom of this. Alright, let's close this out. Let's go back into the Darlington build. I'm almost thinking I did have a uh, texture skew on that. The only thing I did observe when I initially opened it up there was just to uh, find out which texture I was using anyway. So let's go into here and open that up. Okay. And I still got this out here. I can get rid of that for now. So I've got a feeling I'm going to have to do another snippet here to get that information as far as what we're set at anyway. Now if it's not skewed, that's really going to raise an more questions and answers. Okay, so go into there. Nope. Has no skew on it. Damn it. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, so let's see. Now, it's probably got a lot to do uh, with the, you know, changing it. Let me try this out here. So if I were to change this over to a day track, I can easily do that by going like this. Boom. Let's see how that looks. Just like that, turn the lights on. Holy darkness, yeah. See, that makes a big difference there as far as not having that... Uh, Yep, that's way too dirt. 
for this uh this day track so this is so that that kind of shows you what i guess what i'm struggling with as far as to get that balance in between night track and the day track yep so if i were to keep it just as a header this is what we've seen in the uh dover build as far as it being a little too dark so if i switch this back over to night Turn the lights back off. We get that effect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the question becomes still, what do I need to adjust that uh, that shading of the safer on the back side, I guess, to get that to look more nested is all. Still stuck with that. Okay. Now that we've confirmed that that's not skewed on that texture for the light map on Darlington, let's close that up. No. Let's open our Dover track back up. Chase edition, and we want this one here. So yeah, this is new territory for me as far as to come up with uh, a custom shading, I guess, for um, a nested look, I guess, of the safer foam into the between the two geometric uh, aspects of the concrete and the yeah. So let's see here. Let's go back to that start finish, or the restart zone. So we got a couple different areas that we've applied different. Uh, different levels of shading so here we still got the wall shadow with the new foam texture and all that stuff we still need to adjust that trying to balance all this stuff out here we tried some fence um, shading on there which I do think is gonna make a huge difference if we uh, apply that in a positive way but yeah it definitely does still beg the question as far as like what do we need to set this um, shading on the back side of our safer to make these uh, pieces of foam, I guess, more nested. Okay. Everything else I think so far, as far as just the, the overall safer texture, or the foam texture, is pretty good to go, I feel. Uh, so if we, if we were to go with this, all we'd have to do is apply that shading, that level shading to the, yeah. As far as that there, that's about the only thing we'd have to do. And probably what I'd do is do as much the same thing as I did. In fact, let's go ahead and do that right away. <clears throat> let's go ahead and do that. So I need to take... I still got these all in layers, okay. I'll have to do a copy merge. Of, let's say... These two bands here. Okay, so I can do copy merged. Add and paste that as a new layer. Where in the heck? Turn on the wire there to see if that's actually mapped. Yeah, it should be good anyway.
Just gotta fill that in there. <clears throat> oh, it's just this way. Oh, for crying out loud, it's ugly. Try taking this off while MIP and adding a gradient layer. Uh, set a multiply at about 70 or 60. Per yeah, I was thinking, you know, in terms of that, that's what I kind of mentioned. I don't know if I would have to adjust and make a new softball MIP altogether just for the back side. So I had thought about that because I think doing it the light map way is not um, giving the effect that I was really trying to accomplish there so that's something I did you know kind of mention as far as like that might be a possibility uh, for the backside of the safer yeah I don't need an anti alias in this okay there we go cool so I'll be able to merge that down so we're not using that down here it's just on the top here for the Inside back stretch. Cool. So let's go ahead. Layers merge all flatten that file save as Star Block. That's in our Dover build. Um So you just did it. It doesn't look bad as a light map. Uh, took the gradient from dirt. Oh, so you actually applied a gradient to the soft wall and made it a light map. I wasn't thinking of that team, but that might not be a bad idea. Took the gradient from the dark. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can try that out. Let's do it and save this. Let's make a new. Yeah, we could probably try that. All right, so this is the one we're going to redo, so we're going to close this one. Now, the way I'll be able to tell that I'm hoping the uh, the correct textures, it'll, ha it'll have that alignment block on the bottom right corner. So I use that to my advantage here to make sure I got the right texture, which is right here. So it has this little alignment block there. Okay, so we'll do MIP. Keep that at a 3. Save as. Make sure we put that into the root. Retract edit folder. Yes. All right. Yeah. So I think I'll, I will try that. Well, let me go ahead and reload this really quick, so I can load this new texture. Uh, what we want to confirm is on the back struts inside. Yeah, that's the only uh, adjustment I made to that texture anyway. So let's um, reload it up here. New, do a no. And reload this one. Okay, now we'll just confirm on the back side, the back stretch here on the inside. Just make sure that's not that solid white anymore. Shouldn't be anyway. There we go. So now we got that shading back applied to that. Oops. Good deal. Alright. So all the way down along this back stretcher. Cool. Alright, now let's go back to. Yeah, we're gonna. We'll try that. Uh, what you were trying there, Torch, I guess, with uh, taking the soft wall and just apply a gradient right to it and use it as a light map. 
Let's see what we got here. That might be a... <clears throat> Okay. So what we want to do is... Yeah, we're good to go on all this here. Close. Let's take our soft wall. Just had to find it there for a second. Yeah, just a minute, right. So we'll take this and just apply a gradient to that. So you got this at a priority of six, okay. Big deal, so bitmap, file, save as. Put that in the track map. There we go. Close that up, and we'll open that up in our paint program. Back to our track. Um, donor, donor, donor. Track mat and saw. Okay, so if we apply that gradient, dart on the bottom towards, yeah, so let's just see what we can get here. So let's go, um, I'll promote this to a layer, add a new layer, and let's do a gradient on this here. So let's go. Oops. Gradient, and we want to go each direction. Set 180 here. And we only want to repeat this one time. Okay. I just need to change. See how that looks. Oh heck no. Let's do no times then. There we go. That's more better. Now I gotta do this as a multiply. Like so. Yeah. Okay, let's see how that works. So let's do layers, merge all flatten. File save as we're going to do this, so I'm going to name this uh, in our track mat here. Okay. Uh, let's go to bitmap. Make sure we'll do this one. Um, soft wall. Actually, no, let's do it this way. We'll do it. LM. Soft wall. Soft wall. Back. That way I know it's a light map anyway. Let's do that. Open that texture up. Let's do... This one right here. Go. We'll try it with this level here and we'll just go from there. Yep. Keep that at a three. Nope, we only put it at a two, my bad. And again, for light maps, it doesn't really matter. So we're not skewing it. We're not uh, applying a texture size or anything like that to it. So this probably doesn't really matter. All right, so track map. Yeah, that might be for... It just depends on... I'm going to try it this way just to see. I'm just kind of curious anyway. I don't doubt that's probably what it needs to be at. All right, so. All right, let's zoom in on that area. So let's get ahead of that. That's what we got in our view here. All right, so we're basically roughly in this area. Light map, let me see, uh, put it on base texture here real quick. So we're on the soft wall, just making sure. On the right side, now we can go back into light map. And what we want to do is apply that new texture that we just created. Let's see what we look like here. Yeah, 
Yep, so I fall back. There we go. Hmm. So we're getting more or less the same... Same response there. Yeah. I don't feel like that either. Hmm. Now, it might have something a little bit to do, I guess, as far as how much, uh... Currently, I got it at 100%. Let's see if we change this to... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> More was what I was thinking of, is this to apply that shading to it just not even as a light map and just do it as just a you know just the base texture I might try it that way too <clears throat> but I've got this at 60% at least anyway let's try it this way do a file save as save over that close this one and then do uh, Um, yours look much different. See, it depends on if you're doing it in Photoshop and post the paint shop, that might be the difference too. So, uh, okay, so we need this one. Let's do it. Okay, now with this done that way, I should be able to just reload MIPS. So we're right in this area here. You can kind of see that variation there too. So let's go uh, reload MIPS. That should tone down actually. Uh -huh, uh -huh. See, I'm almost thinking it might look better to not do that as a light map. Honestly, let me try that. I just do it just as a base texture. So let me go ahead and remove that as a light map. Okay, and then just go back to the base texture and apply that as. Like so. But then make it darker. As far as like I had, I got this at 60% right now. And I think that might be might be better. So let's do let's try that. Let's put this back to just thinking here. Let's put that back there. Now what I'm thinking of as far as like just the way we've got this uh this level of darkness here. So I might even have to go a little bit darker, but I'll just, just, I'm gonna humor myself anyway. Flatten, file, save as. Yeah, Photoshop, I think, you know, the blending deals, I guess, are gonna be different than they are in Paint Shop. Yeah. Yeah, yours is gonna be different, you know, as far as doing it. You know, the percentages that's why I have to totally do it what's appropriate I guess here in paint shop um, okay so our new texture close this one uh, da -da 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 -da, this one Mip. Da -da -da -da. I'll save it Close that and reload MIPS. So that's going to show up right in here. Okay, so there's really not much difference between applying it as a light map as opposed to just the just the base texture. 
<clears throat> now with that being done, let me see if I go apply it as a light map as well. What does that do? Uh, holy macro. Okay, that's all right. Interesting result. Okay. That's actually a pretty interesting result. Um, hmm. Now, the, the way I think about this now is if I do the base texture, it gets as far as the way it is. And or that this would what I'm thinking is the first way we could create two new textures. So we'd have the light map side and then the base texture for the back side of the safer. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah, the texture side isn't gonna make a difference. You know, as far as that goes. As far as how the shading is gonna show. But just to kind of prove that I guess. It's still gonna come down to the the level shading that I've got either on the base texture or the light map itself. Yeah, so it, it's on a one, as far as on the back side. But that's really not gonna make any difference. I can even turn this down. See, so it won't matter. It's gonna make that darker as all, but yeah. As far as the uh, welds or whatever, but yeah. Um, yeah. It's still too dark. I guess that's the other thing. So I'm thinking what my thought at this point here would have to would would uh, lead to the fact that you would have to have a light map at a certain gradient, you know, as far as the opacity of it, and so much on the actual base texture for it. So that essentially, you're looking at thinking of that terms, you have to have two separate textures to be able to accomplish what we want to do here. Hey oh boy. The question is, is which one do we tone down and which one do we crank up? Because we got to offset those. We don't want them both the same. Cause that's This is with them both set the same. So we both got the uh, the level of uh, gradiency on both the light map and the uh, base texture set the same. And this is the result, which is way too dark. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, if yours looks pretty good, I guess, you know, that's that could be... Um, I'm just trying to show the differences at this point, I guess, as far as if you're using Paint Shop as opposed to Photoshop and so on. What would I have to do, I guess, on... Alright, so... Let's see here. We need to create a separate texture instead of, just for sake of argument here. Um, let's see, let's back this up. So that one I got it at 100%. So if I put this one, come on, there we go. Where do I need to go at? That's about 50%. Hmm. Try something here. So if I go with it, copy. This is new layer. I know that's way too dark, but I'm going to change this to a screen. Overlay would give me that effect. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's actually pretty interesting. Let's do. What does that give us? File. Save as. I want to see what this looks like. So if we go. So, yep. 
objective two. File save as. Yes, and we're going to reload the maps. <clears throat> oh, damn. That is freaking sexy. Huh, that is really interesting. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, So it's got three different sets in here, so I can get them all. I could have just gone right to the third tech seg, I guess, but <laughs> that would save some time. Okay, so that was on the light map. So let me try this light map. So we still got that one. We got to change that one. Okay, cool. That's actually a pretty interesting result as far as that darkness that's on the bottom. What I still don't care for though as far as just that purple hue, for lack of a better way to put it. It just clashes with the, the look of the foam as well as this uh, fence shading. Yeah. It just clashes too much still I guess with the safer foam yet. Yeah. Damn. So if I can get that to look. Yeah, this contrast between if we were to put this fence uh, shading on there with this, that looks like doo doo. That's what I'm mainly looking at. Not only that, but also just the, the clash how it clashes with the, the actual look of the foam. That's a step in the right direction, but there's still some more tweaking need to be done on that back side. Texture is safer anyway. That concept of the gradient as far as dark on the bottom, that's definitely solid. But it's just that coloring of it, it just doesn't look right. Okay. Alright, let me see where I'm at here. So that's uh, three. Wait a minute, where, to, where am I at here? I gotta get my bearing set. So right now we're ahead of. Okay. Ahead of the uh, restart zone there. Okay. Cool. Yep, that's where I want to be. Is right there. Okay, so that's the light map. Base texture. Wait a minute. What am I missing there? Let's go back again. Oh, this one's still got the. Uh, Whoops, this has got the other texture, gotcha. It's gonna see, why is that so different here? Yeah, that's got the wrong. Okay, hold on a second here. Set these all up here. There we go. Man, it's, mm. That's close, and you know, I, I feel that's in step in the right direction. It's just that that hue, and I can't, I don't like that purpling, I guess, as far as it, it clashes so bad with that foam. 
I don't know how to correct that as a problem. And especially in comparison, I guess, to that fence shading there. Doesn't look good. I do like that, that gradient, though, I guess, as far as the darker on the bottom towards the top, though. You'd almost have to do the same thing, I guess, on the uh, s cement here, too, if you're going to follow through with that. Maybe a little too dark. You could probably tone it down just a tad. Yeah. Hmm. Just not 100% sure how to get that that particular coloring of that safer wall better. Um. I mean, it looks good here. It's just the way the <coughs> textures get applied to the geometric uh, parts there as we know it. I'm just trying to think of how to offset that, though. If I was to make it more white, I guess, on that part there. Let me see here. If I go let's duplicate this layer. Oops. Okay. Make this a screen. Hmm. None of these are really standing out as far as like a solid choice. Hmm. No, none of these are really standing out. Take this here. I need to do something with this so it doesn't make it that purpley looking color, I guess, as far as when we apply it. Um, let's see here. Almost feel we need to like whitewash it pretty good like that. Layer smurges. Okay, let's bring this one in. I'm just gonna delete this one out.
Uh, what about taking the original softwall template and removing the shading uh, before adding the shadow effect? Uh, I don't know. I think really what it's coming down to is... I mean, you're still going to be adding shadowing, I guess. Much the same fashion, I guess, with... Uh, I don't really think that would make too much of a difference. I just feel they got to do something with the... We got to really change the... Uh, dynamic of the... Uh, I don't know how to put it, as far as the offset. Yeah, I don't know how I would explain it. Because of the fact that it's adding that purpling to it, that's really the only thing that's standing in the way, I guess, of making it look happy decent. <clears throat> Alright, so let's bring in... Copy. Did I bring it in? Yes, I did. Okay. So what I want to do is change this to... Screen. <sighs> Layers merge all fine. Let's try this one. Okay, so we'll be able to reload maps. Yeah, I think I got the right idea with that, but it's really taking away... Holy crap. <laughs> so all the welds and stuff are... Okay, so let me see... It's really going back to that original idea that I had as far as having to create a separate texture for the base texture for the back side of the safer as well as the light map. Right now we're still using the same one. I don't know if it'll make a difference if I do this. Probably not. Where am I at anyway? Texture set two. All right, so let's get here. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna make any difference. Nope. So we'll just leave that at light map unchecked there. section here just tail end of that restart zone so yeah it should be right here so that doesn't make any difference to apply a texture seg to uh, the light map anyway so I'll leave that there that doggone purpling in that though that's what's uh, I don't know how to get rid of that <laughs> I call it purpling, it's just like, it's just creating that. And that's just the problem that we've always seen, I guess, as far as applying uh, shading, I guess, to a um, geometric wall as opposed to just a modeled wall. In this case, the foam. It's always a pain in the butt to try to get that balance, though. Uh, I really don't, not really sure how we would balance that out. 
so that doesn't do that. It's probably why I haven't, up to this point, I haven't re really applied, I guess, that, that type of um, shading on the back side of the saver to make that look more nested for this very problem. Because it's really difficult, I guess, to get that balance. Now, on night tracks, as I've shown, it's definitely not as difficult. Just not really sure, I guess, as far as how to get that to do it for day tracks, anyway. Um, it's probably going to take a little bit of research and development, I guess, to try, try different stuff here. But at least it gives you somewhat of an idea of uh, what can potentially apply to this. Um, whether or not this concept will get applied to this track, I guess, at this point, that's still yet to be seen. Um... I'm sure Torch is probably very uh, much anticipating, I guess, as far as the, the release of the track, just to get it off as, you know, get it up and out there, I guess, to everybody. So, um, we'll probably continue, I guess, to work on this concept here. We'll definitely uh, still apply, I guess, uh, all the other changes uh, in, in comparison, I guess, to the June race that was already previously released. So, um, yeah. I think that's probably where we'll leave that at. So if anything, I might still keep the... Uh, let's put this back all to where it was as far as without any light map and whatnot. And just get, uh, see what we look like that way. Because the other thing you would have to do in comparison, I guess, to uh, the back side of the safer here is you would have to apply all that um, shading, I guess, to the fencing there. Again, I'll, I'll leave that up to Torch, I guess, as far as whether he wants to do that. It's still a little bit more work to do, um, as far as to apply that, but, um, yeah. Um, use the original wall template to remove the shading and shadow, and then add the gradient, and it looks... See, on your end, it's probably wood, right? Okay, but I don't feel that's going to be too much of a big difference, to be honest. There's not that much shading on the original um, safer texture that's going to make that big a difference. It's still going to get that purpling, I feel. And that's just me probably being stubborn, but I mean, it's just... I don't think that's going to make that big of a difference. Um... You can humor it, though. Let's see, uh... Probably me just also getting cranky, I guess, because I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm getting starting to get hungry here. So let's, um, oh, let me see what I got here. So let's go to here. I'm trying to remember what I did with my gosh darn original safer textures. I don't even remember where I put that stuff. I haven't opened those up in a while. Um, yeah, it might take some of the grungy look up, but as far as it, you know, applying that purpley effect to it, it it's yeah, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. Um, what in the heck did I do with my? I can't remember where I put that darn thing. Yeah, I think I got it in here. Yeah, there we go. There it is. All right, let's go in here. Cool. So that's our original thing. So even if we were to remove this, uh, Torch was suggesting that if we take the shadowing out of that, there's not that much in there, see? There's not really that much in there. That would make that big of a difference. As far as it's still applying that purpley effect, I guess that's that's my only thing. All right, so foam should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and just reapply. The what do you mean? Yeah, that's what I just showed. As far as the shading on it, all that shading, it wouldn't matter. It it really wouldn't. It, it's really just a concept. You'd have to offset that base texture as far as the the white the way it applies it to a geometric wall that's what you're dealing with there so if you're going to apply any type of gradient shading on regardless of the shading that's already in the uh 
the default safer they got in that template, it's still going to do that purpling. And you got we got to figure out a way, I guess, to get rid of that so it doesn't have that clash between this look and the, and the foam at this point. Alright, let me go ahead and reapply. You know, in actuality, I can probably go back to... Uh, yeah, because most of all the other textures that we applied as far as with the safer tops and all that there, I can definitely go back to a PTF. So it will still load in our new textures for foam and all that stuff based on the original. So yeah, let's do that. We don't even, we can totally disregard this if we, at this point, um, this uh, PTF. Yep, yep, yep. So let's go to, prior to applying all these changes, I'm just going to go ahead to, with this. So what this will do is this will still have it applied, um, what I was showing at the very start of the stream, going back in the next to four hours. <laughs> uh, as far as that opening for the uh, starter stand. So we still want to maintain that. Okay. So we're back to that point. So what this is going to do is it's going to take away all the shading that we applied. But it'll have the new safer texture. Or uh, foam texture at least anyway. So yeah, now we're back to square one on that. And, you know, just to, just to confirm or whatever, we do still have all this applied to the opening of the starter stand that we started at the very beginning of the stream so we got new texture for the safer tops that's still applied here okay we got a new texture for the foam and this is what we look like here which even with that being like that, that that's really not that terrible um, until we can figure out, I guess, a better way, I guess, to apply a, a back shading to this the safer wall. That's the only thing that's left. <clears throat> um, you have Texas to uh, fine tune it on. Quick trip around the pond. What do you mean, quick trip around the pond? <laughs> But uh, yeah, so at this point here, as far as like at least what I've uh, what applied there, I wanted to at least play around with the idea of applying some uh, some different type of shade shading, I guess, to uh, make these um, foam pieces, you know, in between the geometric walls, looking a little bit more nested. But um, that still needs to be, you know, uh, fine tuned a little bit. But at least we've been able to apply a new uh, foam block texture. Let's go reconfirm over on the back stretch here to make sure that's still good to go. So we were at least able to apply two new textures anyway. To uh... Yep, so we got all those pieces of on the back uh, back stretch here. So that looks, still looks good. Yeah, so even like here I've already pointed that out too as far as we can put some uh, shading on this back side of this safer so pretty much all the way around we want to be able to figure that out anyway oh quick trip around the pond oh as far as getting into it and, and testing it out um i'm gonna be uh perfectly honest I mean, my brain is just fried doing all that trying to figure out what to do with this uh i'll reserve that for now now barring all this what we've gone over here though it it's still going to leave it up to you as far as whether or not you want to still play around with uh, applying. Um, it may not really need it at this point, I guess. It might be pretty much good to go as it is. I'm just kind of looking around here. This is all what that new uh, foam texture, at least anyway, too. Can't say that enough. As well as the safer... Uh, now, I don't know where you've got that softball top. Um, I still haven't figured out where you've got that applied. So I did make the adjustment to that. Um, as far as in here, going back that far. Um, yeah, so I did the softball top too. But the softball top... 
haven't really seen where that's applied to see if uh, so I'd have, without going all the way through the track to actually determine where those are at um right so we're the top two so is the top two I guess is that used more abundantly I guess than the top would that be a fair assessment on that I just wanted to kind of point to I guess to make sure that seam I guess was in the proper position I can kind of go all the way through this like I said as far as all the tech six but let's see let's go back into base let's go to the top okay here's one right here actually right here after the start finish line speaking no more so here right right over here past the start finish line what I the only thing I wanted to do I guess at that point is just to make sure that new uh, softball top texture is uh, that seam on it because I did have to adjust a uh, tweak on that softball top too so let's see here so that one is right about yeah so you do got the uh, fencing shadow on this part of the safer they're just not over there in the turn so that's that could be something that still can be addressed I suppose yeah because even over here you don't have it so that might be something that can still be addressed uh, let's see I gotta tell where I'm at here so I'm gonna just uh, So I know where the heck I'm at here. Let's change the texture. To something that's going to be right there. Okay, cool. I can always switch it back. I just need to know where I'm at, is all. So right here. Alright, so I will reapply. Softball top. Okay, so the only thing I wanted to look at is the seam. Make sure that's lined up properly. Yep, okay, so that definitely doesn't look too bad. Cool. I just needed to know if I needed to make further adjustment on it as well. Um, <laughs> I should play the slots? <laughs> as far as being lucky? Is that what you mean? I did that earlier to first start the stream, but not that I'm really feeling lucky, but heck yeah. And I got nothing on the shot. Let's go ahead and scold. Nope. So I got nothing on the scold or the uh, shot, but I did get a Almost the maximum, I guess, as far as on the sh risk, anyway. Cool. Anywho, folks, that that's pretty much uh, all I had to go over with there. And now I know uh, Torch was in anticipation, I guess, of getting this track um, released. Um, again, like I said, I guess, as far as what I've gone over with it, um, I'll leave it up to him. And Torch, I can necessarily, you know, the changes that I did make, uh, as far as with the start, finish line, and all that stuff, as far as the starter stand. Um, I can give that to you. Um, that's more or less just a PTF change. So just barring all those other textures that I made as far as just testing out the different shading um, aspects for this, the back of the safer and so on. Don't really need those because those are just a trial type of thing. So that's all That's all going to be garbage that I have in my uh, unpack, I guess, of the track. So That's just putting into perspective at least anyway. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely, I, I'm, I'm definitely seeing some areas that can still, uh, get some attention, uh, to adding shading, like, to the top of the safer. So you got it on the wall, but not the safer, but you do over here, for example, as well as in the turns and so on. Yeah, so there's, there's some sparsity, I guess, as far as with, uh, how you got the shading applied to the safer, at least, so that could, that could be addressed still. 
and that's not to nitpick it or whatever but i think that could definitely be that's Let's see here. Yeah, so you got it all in here. Yeah, these cones are actually not too bad either. It's pretty neat. That's another new feature. If I didn't make that abundantly clear. Yeah, so you got it all the way through here as well. So certain areas I think they were missed. This is a little bit of a more TLC, I guess, as far as to that. So if you can figure out, you know, if, if those textures, say for example, that uh, as far as the shading um, onto the backside of the safer and all that stuff look good for you, uh, as far as what you've mentioned there, uh, definitely give it a try. See if you can, you know, apply it to here. I can, like I said, I can send you either the information for uh, the texture skewing, you know, to make that opening in the for the starter stand, or I can send you this PTF. You can move from there. That's up to you. Feel free to let them in, though. No? We can go from there. Oh, hey there, Lady Death. <laughs> Welcome on in. You're coming on in here, and then you got to leave already. What's up with that? You have that done tomorrow? Okay. Oh, so you want me to send this, PT send this PTF, and then you can go from there? I mean, I can definitely do that. What are you moving at me for? I'm right here. <laughs> Okay, so. Um, yeah, I guess if nothing else, I can I can probably must up, I guess, a little bit of. Um, so we haven't tested this particular rendition of the track, uh, the chase edition, I guess, in the in the sim itself. I can probably do. A few, you know, a few laps on it anyway. I don't know if I want to do a, a full short race or whatever, but um, we can at least get it into the sim and then actually try it out and see what's up with it. I'm kind of game for that, at least anyway. I'll give you all that much at least. Let's see here. Oh, nuts! I guess when I put the uh, tweet out, I kind of screwed that up again. I hate when I do that. Got the double image in there. Rip. Oh well. Hopefully everybody got the information though, at least anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, the safer texture, uh, yeah. So the, the new textures, uh, uh, whatever too, yep. So I got the soft wall top, soft wall top two, uh, the new foam texture, yeah. Along with the PTF, yep. Duly noted. All right, so let's go ahead and close this out. We at least confirmed that that softball top is good to go. Let's close some stuff out here, and we'll see if we can get this loaded up. Uh, do, uh, ready then. So yeah, look at that. The variation we started with the uh, our initial try. This is our next try. As far as taking that right from Darlington 15, and then this is what we ended up with that you can see all the variations in that as far as the color and this is a lot more white I think that turned out the best personal opinion all right so let's close all these though do, 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 do. okay we don't need that anymore yep I got a lot of junk in my uh, rendition here that that's okay it's all Gucci do, 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 do. Lady Death's back, all right. Yeah, so I'm gonna get into. Uh, we'll do a few laps, I guess, around the track anyway, just to kind of see what it looks like in the in the sim. Just gonna close some stuff up here. Do, 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 do. You're kind of coming in uh, right about the time I was. Uh, Fixing the end here, Lady Death. But I'll definitely, uh. Well, you got 74. Oh, I thought you got a jackpot. I was like, whoa. Crazy. Yeah, we don't need any of this. We're all good with that. Let's 
clean up all of our mess there. Boom. All right, now I can get rid of this. Just doing a little bit of cleanup, at least for a second here. Yeah, that's already been we just once. You gotta wait a little bit there, Torch. Oh, you did get the jackpot, though. Nice. Very, very nice. Alrighty, then. Let's do... I do have the wheeler on, I think. Yes. Cool. So, yeah, this is all of our backups we had. Um, as far as the other thing, I do have... Uh, Yeah, that's going to be in the tractors. I'll do, we'll make sure I get that to you, Torch. Uh, you got a two out of three, those? Are that? Oh, there you go. I got gotcha. you. GG's on that. Okay, so where's my, uh, switch this over here. So let's get this on. And we'll turn this one off. There we go. Let me switch over the profiler. It might take me a second to bring the wheel over, so I might have to meet myself and probably bring that over there so you don't catch all that clingy clangy noise. I guess as far as to get that over. Uh yeah, absolutely there. Good to see you coming in. Hope you're doing alright. Okay. Perfect too. So that playlist just ended just in time here. We get this loaded up into the sim here. So let's go ahead. Get this one here and set the persistence one here. Cool. All right. Give me just a second. I'm going to bring the wheel on over. Mute the mic just for a second. Be right back. You know, something I just thought of is all the changes that we've got uh, made to the track. I did not uh, um, make a new DAT file based on uh, those new changes. So what we're going to, going to be witnessing, at least for now, until we can get this uh, some of these things uh, cleaned up or whatever, we're going to use the original um, before the changes to the track. So let me get this, make sure I got that in my game track directory here let's do that so we got let's check that out so we want to go into our papyrus that tracks I think I put it in there just have to make sure yeah so this is before any changes so just a fair mention when I get that in there this is going to be before we did anything that we just uh, went through on the stream so um, that'll at least um be able to check the integrity I guess of the track before we made any changes. This is directly from uh, Torch uh, prior to any of those changes that I've shown on the stream. That's all. Just to give some clarity and some uh, transparency, at least, anyway. Um, oh, you just got home and ate some dinner? What do we have for dinner, anyway? Um, okay, let's go ahead and load this up in some here. Oh, you just picked up some McDonald's and on the way home. I gotcha. Mickey Days. Can't go wrong with some Mickey Days. Alright, so let's. Uh... Alright, so I'm going to think I'm going to load this one up here with the Splash and Go uh, Wednesday Cup uh, Series 2003 mod. This is basically just a. No. A glorified, you know, just a cleaned up version of the original uh, cup mod, you know, the cup series that uh, Papyrus had came up with. And I think Splash and Go has done a fantastic job as far as like just the mapping of the cars, you know, even adding uh, 
you know, different color combinations for with the wheels and stuff like that. It's just, uh, I have a lot of fun with this one here. The way it's uh, optimized, I guess, to run, well, even with the changes that have been made, um, I can't say enough about it, I guess, as far as the, just how much better it is, as far as it, especially texturing the cars, just all around. So 100%, if you do have the option, I guess, of being able to, if you got this in your, uh, to get this, definitely try it out. So let's go ahead and testing mode here initially. This is like I like to try. Must have been the last trick I went into is the Charlotte Rovo, but I want to go to Dover Chase Edition. Let's see what we got here. Right here. Chase Edition. Chase Race. Cool. Pretty cool track picture. Let's go ahead and load this up in testing at least. So we want to check it from this level. Uh, you got a new track scene also as far as the uh, so it loads from this level so far Good deal. I Think you had already uh, pointed this out. You did this in the uh, The spring race as far as the June race as far as to apply that it looks pretty darn cool and it makes a That's kind of what I consider to be the cherry on the top. I guess as far as to Have that coincide I guess with the actual look of the track and to include the logo in there for tonight all right so we're gonna go ahead and load this up in testing I take a couple laps around this way let's kind of check it out now this is in testing it's not gonna have um, all the aspects that gets loaded um, into it as far as uh, track libraries and stuff you know be it um, in rate you know like you would in race weekend mode at least anyway um, yeah, that one we just seen. Yeah, so that's the fact that it's <clears throat> it was evident, I guess, in the previous uh, release, I guess, of the track. This is fair mention, anyway. So yeah, we do have. Let's take a look at some of these new items, I guess, in testing mode here. So we can go into the garage area. We do have this new garage. So we don't have any haulers in here because we're in testing mode, right? That is somewhat by design. So in testing mode, you don't get all the library, I guess, as far as, all the, as far as all the haulers and such. You don't have the banners, the billboards, or whatever up on the bridges, particularly this bridge. You do have also, if I didn't point that out, uh, when we're playing around the sandbox, we got, they put the inside safer over in turns one and two here on the apron. So that's been added. Take a look at that. So we got all the safer over here, with all the renovations on this uh, this end of the track. And yes, I am going in the wrong direction, but we're in testing, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, you can drive to the picker, yes, as I was just showing there. So yeah, so these aren't, um, they don't have a collidable property to it, so you can definitely probably drive right through it. Doo -doo. And that's just by by nature, I guess, as far as the design of uh, 3D models that you put in Inner 2003. So we got, uh, I don't know if this is a, is a Goodyear garage. Is this new? I don't remember if this is new or not, or if that was in the previous uh, version. I don't remember if that was in there or not, but a lot of new items, I guess, on over on this end of the track, at least anyway. Uh, between the garages and the safer on the inside. A heck of a transition there. As I think you pointed out, Torch, that uh, there's some new. You had to create this billboard for the grandstand here. As far as the all that billboards on the end of that grandstand there. Um. Yeah, that was there. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was or not. So just to kind of show before I made we made the adjustments to the uh, starter stand area, it's still got the fencing that's still clipping through it. That's been fixed. So just to kind of show that you can see the fencing going through the. Let's see if I can get to. Yeah. Let's back this up here. 
So yeah, the fencing is still going through the starter stand there. We fi that's been fixed. Uh, that's what I showed uh, earlier, the start of the stream. But yeah, not that this is a terrible look with the way the foam is and all that stuff in the sim itself, just the way it is. I mean, uh, coming up with the, you know, just kind of tweak on that whole uh, concept that we've just gone over for the better part of three hours, I guess, as far as to make those, uh, the safer foam, I guess, a little look a little bit more nested, for lack of a better way to put it. Not that it looks terrible this way. I don't want, to, don't want to discount that at all. I think it would just add a little bit more... Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if I want to say dimension to it. Just a little bit more detail, I guess, to everything else that's been done with the track. Yeah, just kind of like it belongs there. We're just kind of going around here and checking out what's all been applied even in the previous version here. Oops, kind of downshifted there. So the shadows working off the bridges. We already showed that in previous. So that's all still evident in this version. So the main main things that have been um, adjusted on this version is the sponsor as far as driving, 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 or whatever that's called uh, for the fall race here, which happens in October. So that's all been adjusted uh, to the track to accommodate realistic weather and all that good stuff. What I wanted to check out here is the victory lane. So the victory lane has this all depicted for the fall race. Dry Dean 400. Hard night. As far as are some of the banners that are up on the fence. Cool. Something I did want to try in here, and I did not do that in Sandbox, but like uh, if I was to depress the O key. Yeah, so we can see which items do turn off in testing mode. So we don't have any of the garages or anything as far as that's new uh, get turned off. Okay, fair enough. So I just want to try that out. Let's give these guys some uh, bit practice. How about that? And I screwed up. I to get in my box better. There we go. That's probably another word to use as far as being more dynamic. I guess as far as the the look of the foam uh, in between the two geometric walls. Yeah. And there we have it. I think that's a uh, pretty good look. I guess as far as w the chase version. I guess of the Dover. Now I'll probably go ahead when and if this uh, the, becomes officially released. As far as if Torch is going to. Uh, tackle, I guess, all those items that we discussed earlier. Uh, we can definitely uh, get those done, and then uh, shortly after that, we can get it out to everybody else that uh, is looking to put this in the simulation and be able to try it out themselves. But yeah, solid build for the most part, with, the, with respect, I guess, is that little bit of uh, added detail, I guess, with the foam in between the two geometric walls that's about it I mean the way it is right now as far as that all being accurate um, as far as the, the spacing you know the height of the, the safer all that stuff that is definitely what the uh, the actual drivers have to deal with in reality so the fact that we've got all that applied to this here definitely uh, speaks a lot to be said I guess about this uh, the, this the overall build of it solid build Was there not an opening in here before? I seem to recall there was an opening in here. Maybe I'm... I could be wrong. Might have been in the infield. I wasn't sure. Just trying to uh, pick out, I guess, some of the things that may or may not have been done. Go to the care center.
All right, so there wasn't an opening here. I thought there was an opening right over over here. I thought I remember that. Way further up here. Yep, that's right up here at the start finish line. Okay. These we can go through. Three. Yep. Minute. Yeah. Four. So I was thinking there was one closer to the pit entrance there, but I could have been mistaken. This victory lane looks pretty good. Now you don't have in testing mode as far as the the coolers and all that stuff. That's a different aspect there. We can um, just put this put the AI on it. So at least I can come in in testing mode here. Let's switch it on over to. Uh, We'll show it off just a little more. Give you all a taste as far as how the uh, the cars look going around the track. So let's get out of this. We'll go into single race. I'm not going to race myself, but uh, just to give a lap or two, I guess, as far as the testing anyway. Let's go single race. Yeah, this is the Daytona road course that I was trying, I was mentioning to Torch, I guess, about that. Um... The AI needs some work. I'll just put it that way. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> um, let's go to Dover. I thought I had taken that out, to be honest. Chase Edition. There we go. So let's load this up with... Um, we want to have all the cars. And... That looks pretty, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and load that up. Um. Yeah, definitely. Brain is fried. <laughs> Tired. Definitely hungry. Starting to get hangry. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, run this. Uh, I'll let them run some laps around there. We'll kind of pan it around there just to see what's going on with all the stuff from the uh, race aspect here. Let's go ahead and put it right to race, and we'll watch these guys race around. Drivers. Get moving. There you go. I'll go ahead and retire. Alrighty then. Let's put this on live. And let's put it on pace car. How did I turn the race line on? I didn't mean to do that. Oh well. I guess I pushed my R key in. I, I might have had my reflap profile, I guess, on the wheel. That might have been why I turned that on. So we get to see the race line. I guess applied to. Here, let's put it on. Looks like Jimmy Johnson's on the pole. Let's go back to him. There we go. Set it on that one. Check that out so we can see uh, some of the other aspects that has been applied to the track in this chase edition. Let's put it in spectator here. There we go. See it from this perspective as well. Now, I've keeping in mind I've got the I didn't turn off that that aspect of the um the shadows that are coming off the bridges and stuff like that. So the frame rates are going to be a little bit lower in comparison to having that off. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to this view. It's pretty cool array shots, I guess, as far as any camera views. You can see the wing foot one going around the track. How did Newman get to the front? Holy crap, where did he come from? I didn't even see that. <laughs> Up until I got to that view. I just noticed some clipping in that camera, I guess, as far as on that TV2, I guess, as far as the 1 2 turns 1 and 2 area. Yeah, 
Yep, see all that clipping right there? That might have to be adjusted there. I don't know, has that wall been adjusted? You know, on that turn there? I know you got the uh, the new uh, garage and all that stuff there. I'm not sure if that there was an adjustment to the wall. I think the, uh, from what I remember anyway, the cameras that we created, I guess, previously there didn't have that problem with the clipping. Let's put it on TV one. Yeah, it's a new wall. So okay, gotcha. So obviously that camera would need to be adjusted uh, for that addition of the new, that new wall there, I guess, in that area. Because you can see this lots of clipping there, and TV two at least anyway. So that's another thing that could be addressed. That's probably a good thing we did come in here. I guess to kind of check it out that way. That's the only um, issue I really see as far as in TV2 with that there. Just to kind of switch that back there to kind of show that. Just that clipping there. And that could be uh, fixed easy, just as much as just kind of raise that up. See all that clipping right there. You can probably raise that one up there so that it doesn't do that. Could be simple enough. Okay, these two duking it out. What position is he in there? That is for second and third right there. We got Newman's just He's he set sail, I guess, on these two right here. These two are battling for second and third place there. What I'm really tending to watch is where they're picking up the, you know, as far as the race line that I got. I turned on mistakenly. You can see where they're actually slowing down and speeding back up. The orange areas would be the areas that they're slowing down. And then the green areas are where they're speeding back up. Where's Newman at this deal here? Newman was leading this thing. Yeah, I think he still is here. Let's go this way. Oh, he's Clem. Oh, Harvick's actually leading. My bad. So that was for third and fourth with uh, Biffle and uh, Jimmy. This is for the lead right up over here. No, not a lot of slowing down at all, no? Uh-uh. Pedal to the metal. It's like... It's like Newman here is trying to catch, uh... Happy Harvick here. Newman's digging. He's trying to catch him. How many laps we got? Sixteen forty. We're not even halfway done yet. I did put that on a longer race. I didn't adjust that from uh, last time. I did do a forty lap event. Uh, that was in the previous uh, spring race, as far as the. Uh, so I hadn't adjust that. We'll see if Newman can actually catch uh, Harvick here. <laughs> <laughs> I 
these two here have checked out. The rest of the field looks like. They're in their own zip code. The Pepsi can in turn two. Where the Pepsi can at? Turn two. Whereabouts in turn two? Here, let's put this on. Uh, got a TV one here. Let's put it in spectators. So there's a Pepsi can in turn two. Oh, on the outside of the track, I see. Interesting. Okay, cool. So, yeah, we got our pit cameras are still good to go. Let's put it on TV2, see if you can see it from there. It's got that one speed shot that's going over the bridge, but I don't think it'll show that. Yep. I could tell that from... Uh, so, the only adjustment I see in cameras-wise is in that uh, TV2. Yeah. Can't necessarily see it from this shot, but yeah, so a small selection of things that have been added to the track, I guess, uh, in comparison to the Spring Race edition that was uh, released out previously. Yeah, you could probably see it from hood view. You can see the wing foot going on there. We got all the helicopters handling the landing too. So we got it on uh, Newman's. Let's switch them over to. Let's go to the roof view. Let's watch them dig this way so you can see the. There's the Pepsi can there. I think uh, Newman's tires are probably wearing out by about this time. Here, let's see if I can turn off the crap. Won't let me do it. I'm not in the track. Let's see if I can turn off that race line, but we'll leave it on deck. What lap we on here? 25. Newman's digging. Question is, can he catch him? Oh, he's peeking. Oh, no caution yet either. No, none of the other cars wrecking. That's good. Come on, Newman.
I think his tires are wearing out. <laughs> I saw that one time he started to just try to peek him on the low side. We've got less than 10 laps now. 10 laps coming up. Oh, they're coming up on less some lap traffic here, it looks like. We have about seven laps. Closing in on them again. Oh, they're coming in for tires. Coming in for tires. Interesting. Yeah, so they got their uh, at least 35 laps in there. It's pretty cool to get to see a pit cycle. Some of these other cars that didn't come in right away, they would probably be uh, trying to come in for, I guess, for tires and that, too. We got, we got, we got uh, Michael Waltrips in. I wonder if you must have mechanical issues. This would be interesting. Who's going to come out first? Who's coming out first? Oh! Harvard beat him out. Oh, he got a good jump of him off the, out of the pits. Okay, what position did they end up in? <coughs> the rest of the cars are going to be going through pit cycle set. Yep, the rest of them are coming in. And they have about five laps to go. Yeah, Michael Waltrip is 16 laps down. So, yeah, he did definitely had some mechanical issues. Who's leading now? Got the. I think that's Mike Skinner. I think in the 30 car. If I remember right, <coughs> excuse me. It'll cycle back through here, though. Oh, here they come back, coming on the track. Gonna deal with that lap traffic. Yep, so let's cycle back through there. So now we got Newman's in second. Harvick's in the lead. So yep, they all pit cycles are all looks like they're all pretty much finished. Now they these guys gotta deal with all this lap traffic now. <laughs> Two more laps. Getting the white flag next time. Come well, on, Newman, you got nothing for your Harvick there? He's way up there. Let me put this back on Harvick here. Harvick here in the lead. He's got no contention, I guess, with uh, Newman way back there. White flag, here it is. Oh, yeah. Harvick got a big jump of him on him, I guess, coming out of the pits, too.
GG's to Harvick. You got the checker. So it started off with Jimmy uh, Jimmy Johnson leading. He was on the pole. Newman got to the front really quick. And then it cycled between uh, both Newman and Harvick. And Harvick ended up uh, coming out to victor. Pretty kill. Good 40 lap run. We got to see some uh, pit cycle there. That was pretty neat. Pretty nice. So there you go, folks. That's a 40 lap event. I guess uh, running with the AI. Around the new chase edition of the Dover International Speedway. Fiftieth anniversary. And there we go. Ta -da. And let's see how many how many lap down cars were there. I think they went entirely. So it's not till Johnny Benson there in twenty ninth. That's not actually not too bad. Not uncommon, I guess, for that type of uh, track, as far as to have that many cars. Yeah, as far as the pit cycles went there, so pretty cool turnout there. No, no cautions either. That's probably another fair mention to it. Pretty cool. Mark Martin ended up rounding off the top ten. Cool. Well, I hope everybody did uh, appreciate. I guess that little bit of entertainment that is uh, working on, you know, critiquing, I guess, the chase edition of the Dover International Speedway track of the coming out by Torch there. So uh, do look at, be on the lookout, I guess, for that coming out here uh, within the next, you know, little bit or not. We'll keep everybody informed of the progress of that. We do have some things, I guess, to be able to, t to tackle with it. Nothing really that major. So, uh, do, 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 do. Torch says a day or so. So, uh, yeah, be on the lookout for that. Uh, I'm going to get the heck off of here. Get myself some food. <laughs> it's been next to closing in on five hours here. Uh, I'll make sure I get that stuff to you, Torch. I guess as far as... Uh, The PTF and those uh, updated texture files. Um, oh, and then the stream wants to crap out. You picked a fine time to do that there, stream. Hold on there. Come on back. I'll wait for that to settle down a little bit. That's definitely a good high time or whatever for us to bring it to an end here. <laughs> Give me a second here, folks. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and do a what I consider to be a uh, soft right on here. All right. Hopefully, we're back. I think it's settled down enough here. Yeah. So, what I was saying, just in case uh, y'all didn't catch that, uh, feel free to stick around, I guess, for the whole sitting here in the stream. I'm going to go ahead and get the get off of here, and uh, y'all have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Uh, I will be streaming no later than uh, Wednesday for Wreckfest Wednesday up here on the channel. So if, uh, if you're lurking out there, uh, you've liked what, what you've seen on here, make sure you're hitting the the uh, follow button on the channel to get all the notifications when the stream is live. And also check out the social medias. There they all are as far as the Rock Nation Discord. I'm on the Twitter and also the Spine Design Studios Facebook group page that serves as our forums uh, for the uh, Spine Design Studios website. So, yeah, pending all that, um, what needs to be done, I guess, with the Dover track, which isn't all that much um, as far as just to get it minimally uh, fixed up there, I guess, a little bit prior to that public release. Uh, be on the lookout for that. So, uh, we'll see you all again real soon. Oh, there you go, Torch. Not too bad. You have some fun with that. We will be seeing you. <laughs>